<laughs> Welcome oh, to another yeah. episode. This meeting is being recorded. Of two ales and hockey tales with Wally. And today I am so excited to have on three 37 year olds, a 38 and a 39 year old from West Bank, British Columbia, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, Brighton, Michigan, Linwood, Washington, and Arlington Heights, Illinois, USA. Their hockey journeys have taken them to Canada, the USA, Wales, England, Australia, Scotland, Italy, Norway, Hungary, and Japan. Three of them returned to the shed. One of them from way back in episode two, when he had just inspired the birth of the shed and two ales and hockey tails. Another returning shed guy threw the biggest body check I ever did see against the University of Michigan at Yoast Ice Arena. Years later, knowing he did not wear a jock, I did try and crush his testicle in a heated battle in the old honey hole, the big blue tent in Cardiff, Wales. The other made his shed debut back in episode 217 and has put up a silky smooth 600 goals, plays, or lessons. Confirmed muck runner, folks. For the new fellas, one is a staple and legend with the Summerlin Sting and the Williams Lake Timberwolves putting up 37 tucks and 59 games played. But I don't think he's here yet. And the other is a seventh rounder of the Philadelphia Flyers. Played in six AHL seasons and his rookie year for fun put up 263 penalty minutes and continued running amok of the PIM world, putting up 833 in 270 AHL matches and I believe was the most dangerous teammate to warm up with I ever did play with. <laughs> <laughs> they are all confirmed gamers and muck runners and I've witnessed their potential at Halloween parties and camping trips. And we skated the most lightnings in CCHA history. Welcome to the shed. Chris Frank, Jeff Levecchio, Dave Kriske, Steve Silver, and Matt Claxon. Huh. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Woo! Nice uh, to see you guys. Yeah, well, you, you missed there were 35 fights. Set the record that year. You fought 35 times your rookie year. <laughs> yeah, it was a good year. 35 do fights. Had, do you remember when he had Bob in the apartment? That Bob, that the training guy, and was punching yeah. him in the fucking U club. <laughs> you were fighting one of the Getting trainers. Yeah. Remember, he used to hang upside down from the pull-up bars with his space boots. <laughs> I still got those. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. Clocker, I've never understood uh, that about yeah. you. You had a skill set. Um, and uh, why did you come to NCAA? Why wouldn't you go to Major Junior and practice fighting and? instead of college where you don't get to fight ever. Well, again, you get to develop other parts of your game, don't you, Wally? You do. Yep. <laughs> Not Bam. running into your teammates and warm up. <laughs> uh, no, actually I was a what shit. Was a skill guy. I was a skill guy until I shattered my hand and had to get eight screws in it in juniors. Did really? I change the game there? Well, yeah. Skill guy is a that's a pretty strong <laughs> word, I'd say. Skill skill guy would be would be a little bit over the top. I mean, maybe the other team was just scared of you. <laughs> so they got out of your way. The the, the two guys <laughs> in this group that I'd probably say are skill guys to be Wally Creep. Oh, there he is. There's Lex. Creep juice. Creeps here. Look at him. He's like Turn a diesel. on your video, no. big guy. What's that, Lululemon? That's yeah, nice. he's looking tight. Yeah, he is looking good. Anyways, the only two skill guys on the call are Creep and, and Wally. I don't think the rest <laughs> of us could, any of us could consider ourselves a skill well, guy. Vex, you were actually, you were like the first person I ever saw that like did skill drills after practice. Like you did all your stuff around <laughs> the net, like trying to shelf it. And I, I never did anything like that. And, uh, now everybody's doing that shit. Eh? You really changed the game. eh? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kresge. He's trying to. Br hey guys. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, we got him. He's here. Hey. Do you get the kids to bed early or you it. get a hall pass? Are we recording? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I got the best wife in the world. Uh, she's <laughs> taking care of them and uh, took a huge load off my plate. So yeah, since we're recording, I just better get a plug in there for. Well, no, uh, thank you. Um, and it's nice when everybody makes the time for this. Seriously, thanks to all the wives and gals out there, kids that uh, 
let this all happen, right? <laughs> this is like episode 310 now. <laughs> Holy shit, you're churning these out. Humping them out, Vex. Like you like you with weights. <laughs> <laughs> Still jacked. <laughs> um, and Vex, I get in now. We know each other. You did inspire this whole thing, right? I did um a pod with a Cardiff Devils pod over there. And then I did yours, and then I realized how much I liked that and make it a memory and uh, thought, geez, I could do that for all my buddies. So thanks for that, because it's made me way happier. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah, dude. It's cool to see. Yeah. Fun is fun, and I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> so <laughs> anyways, I get it now. We know each other. I guess you guys were all freshies my last year at Western Michigan University, eh? Who should yep. start? Silky? You've been here before. You know what to do. Start, start from the beginning? I don't know. Sure, I guess. <laughs> I, I think I told this last time, but the the one of my first memories, I don't know if you guys remember, like, going to pick up the beds for the dorms. Like, we went over, the, they were all at Wally and, and uh, Stretches and uh, Yancey and, and Daryl's house. We went over there. And I just remember walking in and fucking Wally's in a cowboy hat, no shirt, no pants. And we, we, I was like, I was like, who is this guy? And it was, you know, the guy who's up for Hobie Baker. We're picking up beds to take back to the dorms. And you were impressed. Like, yeah, you were and impressed. Place, yeah, exactly. I was like, yeah, it was, it was, it was a wild start, Wally. You guys picked us right off. <laughs> that we did have a cool, we had a fun a fun apartment <laughs> dude that place was disgusting i don't know how anybody lived there bro like i'm i'm glad it was such a good time but like i don't know how you lived in that place you're disgusted i could tell you're disgusted <laughs> with us i you I know? love you yeah but, but like... you did, you were disgusted with some of our habits were you <laughs> oh 100 percent. no secret there still loved you yeah, well, i i, I, I don't remember your place outside of just partying at your house. Well, we had to bleach the whole thing before we moved in. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's well, actually one of the pictures, Frankie, you sent like that, that was for sure. Our apartment. It was the kitchen behind your head. Yeah, that was it. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but we did party there. And uh, sometimes, you know, because Yon's hole was the laziest guy around and uh, stretch wasn't really lifting many fingers. So sometimes we'd have the big party and it just wouldn't get cleaned up. <laughs> like the whole week. <laughs> None of it. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like it was always like we were stepping on dry macaroni when we were walking around your apartment. Oh, oh God. Yeah. God. <laughs> There's a couple days where my parents would come the next morning after the party to like say goodbye. And one time they like brought my grandma and they walk into the apartment and like they were just so proud of what it looked like. Uh, what are you going to do, right? The amount of times that we would we'd sit around or stand around and watch uh, random people come into the place, especially with everyone that chewed on the team. And just the the beer oh. bottles with chew oh. spit in them, and we would all know which ones. And you yeah. just watch someone, some rando, come in, take a and, drink out of it, uh, <laughs> watch the face change slowly. I definitely saw a couple people. That's kind of what I remember. Your spot, beer bottles. Oh, yeah. Well, I think the first couple of weeks we moved in after you guys left, the homeless guys would show up every Saturday and Sunday morning to click bottles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the thing. Daryl had it set up that they would come middle, like middle of the night. Like we're talking, once the party's over, like four a.m., there would be uh, they were there was a couple ladies that would come pick up a whole bunch of empties, and then they'd get picked up at the end of the room by some car. I don't know. It was bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, wild times. <laughs> so what was your, who lived with each other while you guys were there? Did you guys have a Daryl Yance and Stretch place? Vex, Silky and I live? lived together. My bad. No, yeah, Vex, who did you live know. with? Who Who is clean enough for you to live with? Clacker and Creep were super clean. I lived with Clacker, Creep, and uh, uh, Ludzie. And then it was Franco, Silky, Weaver, and Galley. 
Right. That yeah. That not clean. No, not clean. More <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, I can not. see that. <laughs> There's, there's oh, so many hey, times. Hey, hey. Well, let, let's I be honest. Anytime or... you left something out, Vex would write something on the the whiteboard that it, like, he would name something. I'd leap out <laughs> across the room. <laughs> when I left, we I find like, Clacker a lot, <laughs> <laughs> but he also brought the TiVo, all the sick furniture. He made yeah. the apartment <laughs> nasty. He had TiVo before it was even a thing. We were like over there winding TV and shit in like 2005. It was unbelievable. Franco, I feel like we tried the fines and it just never worked out. Like it was like, it was, it was just, it was what it was. We were, we were all the most they stubborn doing... human beings ever that I even think back and cringe so many times about how awesome I thought I was on, on numerous occasions <laughs> and how I always thought I was the cleanest human being ever. I did dishes all the time, bitch at other people about not doing it. Yeah. And I mean, well, Frank, you were Frank the Tank, man. Like, walked uh, around you, campus. you didn't have to do shit. Yeah, yeah. Frank the Tank, oh, yeah. pretty, Chris, Frank the tank pretty well could walk on water at Western Michigan, couldn't he? 100%. Like, right when old school comes out, it just so happens that Frank the Tank arrives at Western Michigan and just starts killing people. Like that, <laughs> I, I posted that, uh, the video of that hit at U the University of Michigan. Like, that hit was outrageous and to bring it up though was how that started was when the guy gave one of the dirtiest hits i've ever seen to weaves and like knocked him out and then you went down and really smashed the fella <laughs> is he friend and gave the green light <laughs> yeah i sure did whatever you want frank <laughs> wow unreal it's a big hit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I looked on YouTube. It's been watched like 120,000 times now. <laughs> you know, I send it. I send it to guys like at least three times a year and say, keep your head up. Like, yeah. I just I fucking watch. I've watched probably 10,000. I'm 10,000 of those views. I'm just always like I play with this fucking guy in college. He was 240 and he was lightning on the ice and he would murder people and we'd walk around campus and they cheer Frank the tank, Frank the tank and girls would just throw their panties at his long <laughs> California. It was wild. This guy was literally like playing with fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger you're, at the you're height right. of his <laughs> You're uh, right. Western's campus. You were, I, you were, to, I mean, yeah. I think I think about two hundred of those views every time I get a new job <laughs> are from my coworkers because I, I try to get ahead of it by showing that video before they YouTube look up my name and see me get beat up every other video. So, um, I actually I, I I'm in sales and I only sell to the University of Michigan. So that has come up a number of times <laughs> in conversations. I was like, I know a guy that did something. <laughs> oh, that, that like, wildest body I check know. I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. But what, what else was neat about Frank the Tank was like the year before I had been up for like the Hobie. And I tell you, nobody even knew who I was. Everybody knew who Frank the Tank was. <laughs> God, you're a rock oh, star. Yeah. Yeah, if only that uh, paying the college guys was around back then, I could have paid Dude, for it. Dude, you right. would have cleaned oh. up. Oh, my God. Yeah. Would you would yeah. have cleaned up. They started calling yeah. you Frank the Tank the first preseason game against the, whole the crowd CIS champion. scout the whole team. Crowd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Murder CIS friggin' Enders that we played back then. We, that right. Yeah. I just remember, I remember that girl holding the yeah. sign up on the glass, <laughs> licking the glass, and it was like, have my baby. <laughs> I want to have Frank's baby. <laughs> oh my God. Christy, yeah, wasn't that your mom? One, right? yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, gosh. <laughs> um, speaking of the fans, though. Kresge, I'll let you get in on this one. The loss in Lunatics, when you first got to play in front of them there, it's a, it's a pretty wild spot to play hockey, isn't it? Yeah, that uh, I tell people that all the time. What was your top memory or one of your favorite memories at college? Yeah, playing in front of them was unbelievable. Kind of takes you back the first time you go into that rink and like feel that energy. It's, it's pretty awesome. Oh, I just, I remember that one game where we, 
beat Michigan State and they were chanting, fuck you, State, at the end of the game. And <laughs> after Frank had actually KO'd, I think, their captain like twice in the game and he was carried off the ice. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Jammers had to get on and dial it back. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. He went out in the middle with like the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then we got oh. spanked by uh, Fair State, I think, the following weekend or somebody. Like <laughs> um, I can't imagine what it's like playing there now. Like they they're like at the top of the league like every year. Um, I always thought Western Michigan had everything you needed to be, um, a powerhouse team, and I'm just happy they are now. You know, because they got everything you need there. Hey, Clacker. Well. Well, what what are they doing? I, I heard they're getting a new rink now, are they not? I heard something That's about it would be downtown, yeah. which would make no sense yeah. to me. Then there'd be no, no sense. I, I heard it's on no, I heard it's on campus now. Oh, it's, now it's, it's halfway. In... It's halfway yeah, between exactly. downtown and campus, I think, is what I heard. Well, it's they need to make sure the Lawson and Lunatics are coming because you don't closer want to be to too Waldo. far away. I was gonna say closer Waldo's. Waldo's? It, no, like yeah, co- closer to like Waldo Stadium and Waldo's, yeah. Oh, like on that, thing. that could be fun. The cheap pitcher night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that place isn't there anymore. Oh, is it not? Yeah. But it's happening. It's like a big. It's like a big thing. It's like it's like legit. It's happening. You said Waldo's isn't there anymore. Waldo's there. Waldo's isn't there anymore. That's the day disturbing. we went to the golf. We went to the golf outing like two years ago. Is a couple years ago. Is gone. Oh. Oh, it's still there. We were there. We went to the golf outing like two weeks ago. <laughs> it's still there. Yeah. Waldo's isn't still there, is it? No, they put something else there. Uh-uh. It's still there. It's kicking. Okay, so I wanted to bring this up though. So I I my my squad, my year or class has never really gone back ever. Um like at all. Um I think that next year we sh- I should get my crew together. You should get your crew together and we should just blow the roof off that place. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what uh, I mean? I think we should yeah, just go just... go all in for a I'll, weekend. <laughs> I'll go. Skip, I'll go. Right. I'll commit. The, uh, the golf I'll just commit. I'm just bringing this up now. I think there'll be some I'll Broncos listening. Why don't why like if any Broncos that are listening that are part of the Bronco family that maybe haven't been back and maybe there's some hurt feelings reports for some of you guys, why don't we all go back and just have a weekend? Because we are a big family. The pictures I see, we maybe didn't win enough hockey games. But we are as big of a family can get, or hockey family can get off the ice. You know, our parents, our everybody. We should go back, do this thing. <laughs> right? I'm in. I'm in. I'm following you, Wally. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. Anyways, Kresge, when we first got there, was I not? I was your senior. You were my freshman, right? I was. That's a scary thought. (laughs) I was supposed to take you under my wing, right? I was getting guided by the best. Yeah, the Hobie candidate. (laughs) Um, I think we even played a couple shifts together that year, didn't we? Yeah, I I think you just kind of like went out and I think one game. Bowling Green, we played together, and you went out and scored like four goals that night. Got me a couple of chisels on the score sheet, and no, so I thought you were my line mate that so, game. Yeah, it was me, me, you, and Chewy. And uh, Small World was that's how I ended up getting Ethan Frank in the shed. Was they twittered or tweeted uh, that he had scored four goals in a game? And it was the first time since me and Tag me in it. So then I had him on, and man, it's pretty cool to see a Bronco doing what he's doing. He just won the Calder Cup. Fastest skater ever in AHL history. <laughs> like, kids go up places, you know? I don't know who I'm asking. Sick. Holy cow. Wild. Which which NHL team is he with again? Washington, I think. Is it really lagging on you guys? Yeah, it is on mine. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. I don't know what I was saying or what was going on. Shed wasn't strong enough internet tonight. We're on the back deck, eh, Franco? Do it. 
Let's do it, son. Okay. What were we you so you're just talking about your kid playing hockey? Yep. I was where, up uh where up and what kid. are we doing now? Well, we just had tryouts, and that is the most stressful shit I have ever been part of in my life. I hate it. I want nothing to do with that stuff ever again. Why um, is it so stressful? Yeah, just relax, man. No, it's there's too much, man. It, like I was on the ice out of the four sessions. I was on the ice for three of them. Um, and like the first day, the kids had to stress because it's the first time they've had cuts, right? At this age group, they've never had this experience. So like the energy the first day was intense. I could tell from the kids day two be on the ice. It was, it was just scrimmage. So it was fine. They got the cobwebs out by the, the, the second scrimmage, the third skate, they were completely fine. But then I actually got to go up on the stands and watch and watch our kid. My wife and I it was like the first time we ever got to sit together and watch a game because I'm always on the ice with them. But uh, there was so much nervous energy from the parents just because you could tell not a bad way. Like they, they want their kid to make it, but more like you can tell that their kids want it so bad. So they're just hoping that their kid makes a team so that they don't have to get that bad news and go through that bad news with them. And I just, yeah. I've been with these, like probably most of you guys, I've been with these kids since they were like four. And so uh, I just, it's, I hurt, you know, it sucks. Um, So I got that like coming up here, like really, really soon. Like, I mean, like in a couple weeks, um, I'm going to be picking a team and, um, <laughs> there's some kids that like are my buddies for life. And, uh, you know, it's going to be some tough decisions and I'm not looking forward to it. Cause you become friends with the parents, the families, yeah. my daughter's friends with their, that's the siblings. And it's like your hockey family. And then to think you got to do that, but I've never seen the same hockey team twice. Right. So it's got to right. happen. Yeah, for sure. You just got to remind him it's good for him, too. I mean, I'm sure everybody on this call, except maybe Wally, I don't know, got cut. I but, did get cut. I got cut from senior know? A around here. I wouldn't give oh. it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like, it's oh it's <laughs> what, what good lesson, good you know. Lesson. You just got to oh, remind 100%. him. It's, I mean, yeah, I agree. It's still just it's hard to watch, them. though. Yeah, your heart breaks for him. Yeah. I don't know what Clacker's got going on here. Now I can see this pretty mug of his down at the bottom. And then he, Dude, I can't, like, I'm getting a background noise now, and I think it's because you got that pretty picture up there. What's going on, Clacker? No, it's not. Uh, no, my, we're moving, so my internet's all screwed up. I can't even Maybe get on this damn problem. call. <laughs> I, I, where, so where, where and what times. are you doing now? What am I doing now? I had so I actually haven't seen you yet. You haven't been to the shed yet. You and Krisky. You um, never invite you never invite Creep and I. I'm going to, I did now <laughs> with the group chat, but it's hard. There's too many people to talk to. <laughs> so where and what are you doing uh, now? We'll get, we'll get into our solo episode later, but where and what are you doing now? I haven't seen you since two thousand six, I think. It's been that long. <laughs> <laughs> so uh in Pittsburgh. And I uh, do commercial real estate now. Commercial real estate, eh? Yep. So large warehouse facilities, manufacturing facilities, so all all across the country. You're like a sales rep or uh, what are you? You're buying and selling? Uh, it, buying and selling. Yeah, well, it's, only, it's called like a it's broker. It's yeah. actually more like that's a broker, but yeah. And how did you get into that out of the game? Because everybody's got a different transition period. I saw you were mucking her up for six years in the AA. You So of all the guys that played together here, you had the most AHL games. Dangerous to warm up with, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got more games than you guys. I had to take you out one at a time. <laughs> Hey Wally, there was there was a game in the AHL the year I came back from my concussion where Clacker had me dead to fucking rights. I will never forget this. Like straddling the blue line, I kept the puck in or something. I cut across the middle, and literally, like literally, he went out of his way not to hit me. But after the game, I gave him the biggest hug. I was like, "Bro, no thank you so much." I swear to God, oh, any. Man. Who I think would have let up, dude. I like head down. I looked up the last second. My head was like two feet from his like shoulder. And I was like, oh, this is this is how it ends. Oh, what a guy. He, yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Said, I'll never forget I, I, that. 
I was cut. I, I had Frank. You think your hit on Michigan could have been a highlight reel? I could have had Vex to write something. <laughs> sort of. hey, yeah, that, that allowed me to play a couple more years. Thank you. Dex, you're just you're fun. just lucky it wasn't warm up. If it was, yeah. warm-up, <laughs> yeah. was that's when you got to keep your head up. <laughs> hey, well, the big question you got to ask Clacker though is what what was going through your head in warm ups where you would blow one person up every. <laughs> But like, it's, 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 it's literally like, so everybody does warm up the same in hockey. Like everybody and, skates around in the same direction. And all of a sudden there's a guy skating around <laughs> the wrong direction. That's that, that is huge. And it's he's not tank. even paying attention. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys got, I'm making sure you guys are, I'm making sure you guys are paying attention. Right I, now. I had to know where you were at at all times during warm up. <laughs> the game was no different. Let's be honest. <laughs> Uh, so Clacker, you got family or anything, or what's going on in your world? Wife, three kids, holy two dogs. Moly, you're in one too, eh? <laughs> All in, bud. Uh, ten year old, six year old, and almost a three year old. Jeepers, busy boy that, eh? Yeah, we're all, yeah, it's been busy. <laughs> <laughs> and, you want to cry sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and creep, where Krisky, where are you, where are you, what are you doing now? I'm out uh, back in in the old hometown, West Kelowna here in BC, working for uh, the Royal Bank. I uh, writing uh, large credit deals, like ten to ten to fifty million. I'm underwriting those deals for businesses in the area here, commercial lending. And uh, yeah, got two kids, four-year-old and a two-year-old and uh, still happily married. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then after school, then you did jump right into the real world then, eh? So straight to Royal Bank or what? No, I, so I, for one year, tried to make a go of it in the central league. I got, didn't quite make it through preseason. And then, uh, Went back for a couple weeks to visit the school and the boys, and then and then came back and joined uh, joined beer league hockey. So eight eight titles to my name there, though. You guys got all the <laughs> games, but how many you got eight beer league titles? <laughs> hey, a championship's a championship in any league, right? Exactly. <laughs> you must be sick out there too. Just dangling fat old men. Yeah. Your, your first. Oh your yeah, first, you'd still you'd still have the hands. Toe your, drags. Your, your first sure. game ever. Didn't you dance somebody in your first game oh. ever? Like the most right at the blue line, right in front of yep. us. I think. Yep. Yep. That was unbelievable. What, was that like, the OSU? my only highlight at school? But yeah, oh. hell of a highlight though. Creep. Was that the OSU weekend? Like that uh, where we we no. swapped. Up? No, it was Robert oh. Morris. Our it was our oh, first okay. first reg season game that year. Robert Morris, yeah, yeah, I yeah. remember that. Like right in front of the bench, kind of yeah. just fucking see ya. Oh, yeah. Wally, Isn't it interesting Wally, when you get actually, talking around what you remember? Cheapers. Yeah. I hardly remembered ah. my hockey career until I started talking to people in my shed. I'm not even in my <laughs> shed though. Now, brutal. No, I would still call the best year. The uh, I still my favorite weekend we had was that OSU weekend freshman oh, year yeah. on Halloween. On, on Halloween. God, yeah, you're right though, and that I it's came up on on their solo episodes was um that's the start of a season when you're becoming like a team and a family and you win those two games and we just have a time. It's just shocking that it, we we didn't start winning after that because that you'd think that would bring a team together because every, we all talk about how that was like the funnest night ever. <laughs> Hell of a Halloween party at that apartment. I don't know how long it took to clean that one up. <laughs> I still remember your shirt ass on top of the – you were standing in your kitchen cabinets kicking away all the bottles <laughs> off it. <laughs> Everybody remembers different stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, good times though. I remember I was I was dressed as a shark, a blow up shark, and uh, oh, that's my, right. my roommates and I all had blow up outfits. Yeah. And yeah. then we went to the bar for a little bit to for some reason when there was a party at our own place. And when we got back, our apartment was so full we couldn't get into our own place. Dude. <laughs> well, you literally couldn't fit another person in. You couldn't open the like door. One, it, was, it, was, it was it was literally one in, one out. Like yeah. you had to wait. Unbelievable. In the yeah. Unbelievable. Ah, oh, man. Good stuff. 
Fun times. Unbelievable. Yeah, so that's actually one of my questions is favorite nights as Broncos, but we'll get into that later. Hey, Silky, where what are you doing now? So I live over in uh, Beverly Hills, Michigan. It's like, like 15, 20 minutes outside Detroit. I've been, uh, I do sales for a tech company. Like I said, I work, I work with my, my customers, University of Michigan. So I work with them all the time now. And then I got uh, a wife who I met uh, essentially the night we graduated. And then now we have three kids and uh, we're hanging out, man. So it's good. So wow. eight-year-old, five-year-old and a two-year-old. Jeepers, we're, we're all now. grown it's up, lot. isn't it? It's it's, it's interesting yeah. seeing it's all great. your puppies grow up. Yeah. Um, and oh. Ve- Vex, um, you have a hell of a background behind you there. Um, I had a nice background yeah. before I had to leave the shed. Um, but uh, you got the Broncos and the Bruins there. But um, speaking of how we know each other, last time Silky and I had wrote to each other, he said, I'm at Vex's wedding and i'm about to rip up the dance floor so did he, he? Did. oh did he, he did he was crushing did he still got it he was he was <laughs> fucking slaying him and sam were out there the whole night it was unreal weddings need How people like that? that you got to get involved yeah yeah it was unreal we had a we had an edible bar and it got wild <laughs> It got wild. <laughs> An edible bar, eh? Was there yeah. free booze too? Or oh yeah, it, was this a healthy wedding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had, <laughs> had the edible was granola. It was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So where was this wedding? And congratulations to both of you. Love yeah. is love. Haven't heard yep. a love story in a while. How did two crazy kids meet? Uh, she DM'd me on Instagram and uh, I'm. Talked to her for a couple of weeks. Went, up, went to Nashville. Yeah. She was living in Nashville. I met her out there, and then we just started dating. And uh, she moved here a year later. Then we got married. I don't know, year three. Did I not hear something about uh, you gonna start a gym or something? No, I already have a gym. No, but I thought you said something about doing it with her or something. I thought you posted something. Uh, we're well, we're uh, we're building like a nice gym in our basement because she does. She yeah. does uh, online training too, and so you're a busy like, boy with all this training, eh? You got a lot of online clientele too, because I know small world Jeff is. You started um, a Twix throwing thing in uh, Hungary with Matt Caruth. Yeah, so I got that to start fire up again in Cardiff when he came to the shed, That's and awesome. that now we got a rocket in Denmark too. That's awesome. That's <laughs> it is so fun. Rid- it's so ridiculous. It's that me and you so started ridiculous. it. <laughs> yeah, I just told the reporters one day. I'm like, this guy loves Twix fans. Please give Matt Caruth Twix. And every single game, there'd be hundreds of Twix on the ice at the end of the game. It's so stupid. <laughs> but it's so stupid that it's so fun. Is because yeah. then he goes to Cardiff. And yeah, and it's everywhere when I, now. I end up just having them on, and we get chatting, and now we've become buddies. But like, literally, I was like, "So, like, you like Twix? Like, we can get that fired up here." And then the <laughs> next game, there's Twix all over the ice. <laughs> so funny! It so is stupid. fun. It is so. But you know what? In Manchester, England, now because of talking in my shed, they now after every win throw chocolate on the ice. They have a chocolate storm. <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's it, a weird tradition. Yeah, and now their captain's going to have a two ales and hockey tails logo on his jersey while he rips around. You know, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's dope. <laughs> uh, anyways, thanks for inspiring all this fun, Jeff. You know, you inspire a lot of people, you know? Living, well, man. you don't get a blue. He's, that's why he's got his blue check mark, huh? That's why he gets the blue check mark. Yeah. Don't you pay for that nowadays? <laughs> I, don't, I don't pay for it. <laughs> I, I, uh, I went to his wedding and he was like, Hey, I'm doing a workout the day of my wedding. You want to come? And I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Silky showed up. Silky showed went, up and I just killed. Gym. I went to the gym and his like, his like social guy was there and we were chatting. He's like, I'm getting you over hundred K tonight, man. Getting you over hundred K. And he did. He fucking got him over hundred K that night. <laughs> it was hilarious. I didn't so, work out at all. Sorry, yeah, he no. got over a hundred k. What does that mean? Oh, he, oh, you know, hundred k followers. While I get oh, it, yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. So, it was that's time. what he got to there. Yeah. Jeez. It, it was, it was so you're kind of a big deal, huh, Max? Yeah. You never Bill know Leverage who's boys. famous, right? You, you never know who's famous. Yeah. Just got Bill yeah, Leverage, man. 
Uh, no leverage. Well, maybe someday you can tell all your followers that your hockey career actually started when they put you in the same hotel room as me for road trips. And then you started learning how fun it could be to get naked and swan dive into the bed. <laughs> this, motherfucker, this guy was so skinny, fat, chubby. And he would just gear down like Bruce almighty. And then he would swan dive his naked ass into the hotel bed. I, I love that. I couldn't wait. Every time he got in the bed, that's what he did. Every time a jammer for sure, put him with me so that he would just be straight and narrow for playoffs. Oh, yeah yeah <laughs> like i mean yeah nutrition was this new thing the world didn't know about it yet jeff <laughs> you definitely didn't I, know about I it i think the world knew about it i just don't know if the senior class knew about it. <laughs> the entire senior class <laughs> that's what i um... Uh, on my first trip, on the trip there, I went to the game. Jambers took me. I had to go on a tour with Ansel. I showed up at the senior, uh, whatever it was, their apartment there. I thought I was getting punked when I saw all the senior guys. How out of shape they were. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. I was in. I was. So in, you guys are making I fun of our bodies right now. That's what you guys are doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You're yeah, doing it without saying it. You're we're making fun of our it. bodies. You going. know what? It, well, it's a body type well, issue. Well, no, look at my I dad. Teens are a thing. <laughs> well, yeah, I've worked yeah. out two years. I think I have a better body than our senior class. My freshman year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember, so I played I played juniors with Ansel, and I remember calling him because um, I played an extra year of junior afterwards, and he was at Western, so he was a year before me. And I called him, and I was like, dude, are guys just, like, working out? Are they just shredded? What's going on? He's like, nah. <laughs> I, was like, no, I was like, that makes no sense to me. Yeah, <laughs> He's but- like, no, that's not, that's not how it is. Because I was so scared. I was like, oh, my God, am I going to be, like, big enough or strong enough? And he was like, nah, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, but then but then we got our class. I remember walking down the hall the day that like my first time walking down our hallway in the dorms and like, boom, out of the rooms. It's like Frank Weaver, you clacker. It's like all these fucking Neanderthal monsters. Monster. And I'm thinking I'm like coming in like in the best shape ever. And I'm like, oh, my God, these guys are massive. I'm going to get <laughs> yeah. murdered. And then stretch and yawns will roll. And then you the see the, the older guys, and they <laughs> yeah. are literally like my grandfather, who is like sixty, it was could like outrun okay. them. Come on, yeah, clean but, it up. But, but then the worst part would be is that those sixty-year-old looking men would go on the ice, and Wally would just dangle through you. Yeah, Wally so good. Yeah. Yawns would throw these hip checks. These guys are just old school crushing you. Crafty <laughs> veterans. <laughs> I'd never yeah. seen the reverse shoulder until Wally. I had never Seriously. seen that. It was Dude, the work. Yeah. He killed uh, people. I would try my that was I would try my hardest to hit people at that point. The rest I'm not gonna skate around trying to hit people. That shit's exhausting. But if they're gonna come at me, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh That's but Fra- Frankie, we used to have some battles, eh? Like uh yeah, we haven't really got into much other than shoot the breeze, but like I remember when that season we played together, it'd be a one on one drill, and nobody else was allowed to play defense against me. And it was like, Frank, fucking give it to him. And it would be one on one, full ice for like minutes. <laughs> Dude, and I'd be I trying re- to reverse hit you, about that. and you'd be going at me, and we'd be so tired by the end. Um, we had to make it look right too because they were really barking. <laughs> and that was after I did my nine lightnings already. <laughs> so penalties <laughs> so- <laughs> earned, yeah. <laughs> Uh, mental toughness. It's a thing, I guess, in hockey. Cause man, <laughs> I, I was at the breaking point a few times there <laughs> last year. Um, yeah, that was crazy. Um, the lightnings we skated a lot of them. You skated way more than the rest of us. I mean, self-inflicted, but yeah. Like hey, I, it was, was almost like he didn't like that. You were Frank the tank and you were the biggest man on campus. <laughs> yeah, but then he'd bring me in and tell me to keep crushing people. It was, it was so <laughs> but you're going to skate a lightning for every penalty. Hey, how many hit from behinds did our team have in the first like five games? We had like 45 hitting from behind penalties. We were always penalty killing. Yeah. Didn't they? 
Didn't it, I think Colhane like actually had like a whole like video or practice session where he's like, I just want you guys to go in and bear hug him if you see the number. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you could yeah. you could cross check on the pants, but not yeah. all oh, the whammy. That's the whammy. Yeah, yeah that's whammy. that's the whammy. That, that was the, that was the Kenner. The Kenner yeah. lesson. Like yeah. yeah, right on the back of the hip to see if you can get the heels to shoot out. <laughs> yeah. That's the only reason why I got committed to Western is because that's all I fucking did. Oh yeah, you were go. You you got man strength too, man. Those whammy. Oh, you know, I saw. Uh, I I did a whammy to a guy in the coast the next year, like going in on the four check, and it made him go into the end boards. And I got the wheels beat off of me for it. <laughs> that was my last whammy on the four check. <laughs> yeah. One and done. Yeah. yeah uh, it wasn't fun. <laughs> um, so, Clacker, you said you ha- broke the record for the HL fight to the season. Do you still have that? Would you no, know? No, no, no. Didn't break it. I led the, it was, I just led the, led that season. That year. You had the most. Yeah. So, who's the toughest guy you fought? The toughest guy was, what's that? Nothing. I'm scared. Tough question. No, I was, was going to say, Car- Matt, Car- probably the toughest actual for a best fighter was Matt Karkner. Okay. Uh, but like biggest, probably top, just one of the toughest guys to fight was probably Steve McIntyre. The guy was just huge. Soccer. Oh, Clacker, who was the guy you fought? I went and watched Clacker play a Canucks. He he tried a tryout contract with the Canucks, and I was in, living in Vancouver at the time. And I went and watched you in the preseason against Calgary. You fought and you fought some guy, and it was just an awesome like toe to toe. I remember that fight. LeBlond, uh, Pierre Luc LeBlond. Yeah, he's a lefty, he was wasn't he? You know, here's a righty. I got the. I think I had the first Shanahan video. The guy hit me from behind in that game. <laughs> that was best got in the fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unreal. So um, my my childhood dream, just you know, playing for the Vancouver Canucks in the NHL. You know, day one Canucks fan, and who do I see? Least guy I would ever expect to be in a Canucks uniform, Matt Clark. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was the most awkward situation too because I'm sitting next to the. I, I somehow I think that they're pointing a joke at me. I had to sit between the two Sedin guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at it, I'm like what the fuck am I sitting here <laughs> you had to <laughs> most people would think that's cool <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like dude I'm like who's fucking with me you pr- you probably got cut after you buried one of them in warm ups eh? <laughs> 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 I don't why I got sent home the next day <laughs> no but I loved it I got there. I'm like, Creek, I'm playing tonight. You gotta come. We got he got him tickets. He's at the game. He come he got to come down the room. It was awesome. That's so cool, man. And so Cl- Clacker, guy. you and Vex, I was checking this out. So you left school early too, eh? Yeah. Well, uh, we both left after junior. So after the third year, what made you think you were ready to rock? And they obviously offered you. Like, how does that go down? Um so again, I was drafted coming in, and Philly told me that they only wanted me to come for three years. And then after the season, uh, they approached. They me wanted said, you to go wait. to Western Michigan, but said only three years. Yeah. <laughs> and then after the season, they came to me and they said, "It's time for you to leave." And then I actually went to call Hayne before playoffs. Probably worst mistake. <laughs> you got all pissed, and he sat me the whole playoffs. Yeah, yeah, he really good thing, yeah, well, that, for sure. <clears throat> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so I guess that doesn't surprise me with some of the things I've heard, <laughs> but uh, that sucks, that sucks big time. Um, it'd be like playing your hardest for four years and then like finding out that he didn't say good things about you to people, so I was like. Huh. You know. No, again, I, I, I love Jammers. We, uh, again, throughout the whole year. Again, we never had any issue. That was my only one little beef. Yeah, and for me, he put me in every situation to succeed, and I did everything I could to play good. But you know, some we didn't win, and that's what happens when teams lose. 
You know? Got bugs out here. I need to get back in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> and Frankie, I we brought it up before just the two of us, but I thought I always found it so fun with <laughs> I think it's a hilarious story now because we hadn't seen each other since Western Michigan. Then we find I end up in Cardiff. You're in Brayhead, which is now the Glasgow clan. And we're playing like one of the first games of the season. And I haven't seen Frankie in like a decade. And I skate by him and I give him a whack on the back of the legs for fun. Like say like, Hey Frankie, I'm here. Like, ha ha. And he turns around and tries to cross check me in the face. And then he starts looking at me like, <laughs> And then he called me up. He called me a pussy. And I was like, I was like, I was like, Frank, I'm just saying hi, you psychopath. <laughs> right? Well, remember I remember Chris? that. Yeah. I, I mean, Maybe I, I, you I don't remember, remember it the same. That's what I remember. <laughs> I, I remember feeling something in the back. And then I was like, what would Clacker do right now? I was like, you fucking pussy. And I went after you. <laughs> uh yeah i mean uh we battled yeah. we battled because there's a couple of funny pictures and videos of the one time there was a bit of a melee in front of the net and you guys had a couple of my guys in a vulnerable position and the one guy wasn't behaving we was doing i was trying to get there to like help pull and you didn't <laughs> let me go in to help pull you suplexed me yeah, that's because there was three six foot five guys on your team. I'd rather not go against, so I just grabbed you and took you down. <laughs> it was funny though. <laughs> and then there's a picture when I and I tried to tell you and that's when, when we were right in each other's face. And I had to figure out if you were serious or not. Like I had to figure out if you still loved me. So that we were standing there after a whistle, and I knew you didn't wear a jock, and I lifted up with my stick as hard as I could, <laughs> and you had your stick up between my legs and we were both just gumming each other and I was just waiting to see if you were actually going to punch me and you didn't love no. you too <laughs> there was well like like Bex's story with Clacker uh, I mean I played against Galley quite a few times and played against um, uh, uh, Wadi uh, Cam Watson uh, and when I was in Elmira and he was on a PTO and I, anytime there was like a Bronco around like I was never gonna try and hurt a Bronco. You were no. the first, you were like the closest person to ever being like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> My wires are crossed. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Cause yeah. after God. the first time we played against each other, <laughs> yeah. after I came out, you're like, so are we still friends? I was like, I, know. I, was, a I was like, I guess so. I mean, what was that? <laughs> Wild stuff. <laughs> Dude, Frank, I still tell tales of Frank. I cannot Ugh. believe that he was that big, <laughs> that good at hockey. Like you well, were playing you on were... his team is way more fun than playing. against. Oh, my him. God, man. <laughs> 240, 240, but so fast. Like, I don't understand how that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you the, wheel around the, the world at? Oh, his legs were out? as big as everyone's trunk. They were Dude, huge. His legs were wild. huge. And they just motored. Most. Well, and speaking yeah. of poster picks, there's the one of Frankie and Silky that Frank sent to the group, which the rest of you, embarrassing, be better, send a couple photos, hockey oh, photos, hey. family photos, I don't care what it is, send me a wedding photo, <laughs> be better. <laughs> but I know there's, a good time. Was, there's, there's no funny. iPhones back in the day when hey, we were playing, hey, there's, not much, there's not much hey. footage. <laughs> that was, that was, I still have that. I have that was summertime feet doing shorts it. Time. Dude, remember oh, we went roller skating oh. that day? We Frank Roll, and I went to four wheels. Oh, and I have a couple. I should find the other pictures, but there's a couple pictures of us like ripping that roller skating <laughs> place too. Yeah. You're telling me fun? you guys went there and cut off jeans and he's in a muscle <laughs> shirt and you went roller skating? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the team mom took us too. I think Sandy was our driver. I think Sandy <laughs> might have been our driver. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You guys got dressed like that with roller skating, actually. That uh, might have been also like the around the same time as the the brownie night where we had that tray of brownies. It made like the classic rookie mistake of the neighbors made it for us. We had a couple. It was like 20 minutes. We're like, this isn't working. And then (laughs) then you over dinner, crushed the whole tray, and all of a sudden we're at the pizza place and just staring at each other, trying to laugh. 
<laughs> we did that. We did that at the. We remember we went fishing in some river too, and they, it was the same brownies. And we were like, "What are we doing?" <laughs> we were sitting on coolers for like three hours, and we we're like not catching anything. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been like the edible bar at the Vex's wedding. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah. <laughs> so speaking of, uh, so apparently at Wastered Michigan, um, senior trips are no longer a thing. Our group. Mark Class came into it with Dave Cousineau and his crew that put on one of the most epic days I ever had as a Western Michigan Bronco. We went camping for the weekend. They took you on a bus from the campground to up the river. And then we got on uh, tubes and we had a keg and we went down the river. And then Wasn't that freshman trip. Yeah. And then we, we camped the whole night and like, we became a family like right off the hop that season. And then our turn was to do it with you guys. And we went camping that year and uh, Yancey dominated me at karaoke. Um, But um, I thought those were like the most epic days of college. And that's the shit you remember is getting to know everybody and becoming a team and a family. And uh, apparently they don't do it anymore. That's a bummer. It is a bummer. It is a bummer. Yeah. I can see in those tight that... spots. I'll go ahead, Franco. No, I'll go for it. Oh, no, was that the weekend was... Wally made the bet that he could treat the whole case and actually did? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Clacker, this is this is exactly what I was just I was thinking the exact same thing. I think Krisky and I, I think it was Krisky, we were like the rookies that had to count how many beers Wally had to drink. <laughs> I think I remember <laughs> that too. Yeah. <laughs> we finish a thing and we stopped at like 30. And we're like, all right, dude, it's like 1 p.m. We're good, dude. We're done. So let's we'll make up a number of times. Uh, I don't know about that, but um, uh, well, there I'm was just- some of the events I had written down that we played was there was bean bags naturally, but beer darts, and then there we it turned into a wiffle ball tournament, didn't it? <laughs> all I remember is Frank dancing to bananas with a fucking tiki yes. torch. Yes. <laughs> yes, I remember the keg throwing. Who was doing that? There was a keg throwing contest. It was you, Chris. <laughs> I do not remember that at all. It, it it happened later in the evening when we had empty kegs. It turned into a keg toss. I didn't participate. I just thought it was funny. You threw it as far as you could for sure. A few times. <laughs> I think there was a I think there was a flex off too from with like Piercy and Lesperance. Oh, you, ima- yeah. you imagine if there was phones yeah, no, back when we were in dude. college. Hey, if there's phones like there doing? are now, holy moly. What's Jeff Pierce doing now? Anybody? I don't know. No. I he played was... with him for a year in uh Cardiff. Yeah? How was that? It was unreal. Yeah, was he the same? Him. Same human being. <laughs> <laughs> Tails could be, except he had hair down to here. <laughs> Smoke all day. I don't know, actually. Yeah. Anyways, go on the ice, dangle. Do his thing. Uh, pull up lame if someone was coming to hit him, but <laughs> rotated him. But at the same time, you get like forty goals. It was perfect. Yeah. Dude, great shot, great toe drag. So sick. Yeah. I played against, Talked I played about against how great America Union. was. Yeah. <laughs> all the British people. <laughs> they hated him. <laughs> I played against him in junior, and he always would. He was like so much older than I was. He was like fifty in that league, and he was like he'd literally be like. I'm gonna cut you with my fucking stick, like right, like, you know, like he was like nuts, you know, <laughs> like he was hilarious. And then when I finished hockey, we moved like we're like right down the street from where we used to live. But like I used to see his parents at Meyer all the time. We'd like go grocery shopping. I'd see his parents. I'm like, hey, Pierce's. It was like it was, it was <laughs> that's hilarious. awesome. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. That's uh, it was the funny. I, like I knew Piercy from just partying with him, obviously, and, and obviously being around the rink, but actually living with him, it was. It was really cool to go over to Europe for the first time with him and experience everything with him. It was yeah. a good time. That's cool. Hey, Franco, uh, you've been sitting in your car for an hour. Where, where are you driving to? I'm at Lowe's right now. <laughs> Just, so I'm waiting, waiting, waiting to go in and grab a couple things so I can finish my... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought I thought, thought the senior freshman trips were there were things that should happen. And I think the Broncos should fire that tradition back up because uh, that, was, that was a great tradition while well, you guys did a great job right and i heard you guys did a great job because i just had jerry coon on 
Um, and the guy's a legend, by the way. Um, got me ranked high, like all over the world, with chatting with him in the shed. But uh, he told me one of his favorite nights. I asked his favorite night as a Bronco was the night I believe your camping trip gets canceled because Frankie, you told me about it. And then you turned it into like a big party where you needed everybody to help and get things set up. And you guys made your mark too, right? Well, I'll let Silky and, and Krisky talk about it here. Their perspective. Krisky, get your get yeah, involved Creed, here. You got, I, I got, I got, yeah, I got some, but you, yeah, go creep. You got it. <laughs> Creep. The, Why, I, the rookie <laughs> creep. Oh yeah. Let's not get into that. I don't know what to call you. <laughs> my biggest my biggest regret was not seeing creep as a senior. It just an absolute glory. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Senior was, year when uh, the writing was on the wall and there was no more PP time. Uh, it was a fun year. <laughs> <laughs> Still chiseled though. <laughs> chiseled Chis. chiseled yeah um yeah i i remember that rookie party didn't we build like a big tent city for all the freshies and did like a big beer olympics or something outside the <laughs> the apartments there that was a lot of fun uh, those are the days you remember though when you host a party like that so silky you you were involved too in this yeah i i just remember it was like one of those days and franco you were like correct me but like we were ready to leave for this camping trip and like we were all ready to do like the same thing we did our freshman year and then it was the weather was horrible and we didn't know what to do so we had like a team meeting at our house and we're like all right what's the plan here and then all of a sudden it was like all right let's get some tarps let's throw these things up at the u club let's put something together and it literally was one of those things where it just it worked man and it was it was hilarious and i actually um one of my best buddies now is Pat Nagerson. And he he told me if I didn't talk about him today that he would unfriend me in life. <laughs> so, butt so flaps. I What's up, butt flaps? Sure talk to this kid right now because he is like my guy. Did you just call and, him butt uh, flaps? Yeah, he's got flappy exactly. butt cheeks. Like like not not firm like mine, eh? Oh, yeah, not firm, but just yeah. It's like a mud <laughs> flap on a truck, but, but it's a butt <laughs> flap. It hangs a bit. <laughs> he told me, he's like, you have to talk about Tarp City. This is like the this is like the one. And that was like he was, I can't remember if he was a freshman or a sophomore that year, but man, that was like one of those defining moments for them where they remember that shit. And right, like, and they they brought it up, and that's why it's a small yeah. world. There's a lot but, of Broncos yeah, to talk to. And you know what's cool about, you know, maybe Stretch, and Daryl, and Yance Hole and myself didn't make our mark on the ice like we wanted to. But I was just skating down the road with the up-and-coming professional hockey players around here in O'Reilly. And um, one of the fellas, we were talking, and I mentioned I played at Western Michigan. And he goes, oh, I've played with Broncos they know how to get after it. <laughs> <laughs> Which Broncos were they talking about? <laughs> I don't, they didn't even mention it. They just said like, they, they work hard and play hard. And I was like, Hey, I'm into that. <laughs> 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 but seriously, I don't know. I, uh, I wish we would have won more when I was there. That's for sure. I wish, um, my whole class was chiseled, but, um, I don't know. It's like, Krisky, you mentioned how the power play time washed up. A couple of the fellas felt deflated and defeated. And then they had, there were seasons I saw them that where you didn't know them, where they showed up jacked, ready to rock, and then things didn't go their way and they let it slip the other way. And they knew their time was over and they weren't, say, getting back in the net or getting back in the lineup or anywhere that they never got to play anymore. <laughs> so it was hard to stay motivated for some of them. And then for me as their roommate, it was very difficult when we weren't winning. I was still very motivated and trying to go places. And it wasn't always the same with everybody's attitude. <laughs> it was very hard that way. You I know, think that was different with our class though. I don't know. I feel like the class that we had was, was a little bit different. Like, I feel like our mindset and like the stuff that, I mean, especially when you come in with like Vex and like guys that are like, and Clacker who have done like big things beforehand and like 
had like a process for working out and all that stuff. I feel like it, it definitely, I, I, I don't know. I feel like it was like a good foundation for what Broncos are now, right? Well, it was the right like, leaders like, doing it. Hard, it, it we, yeah. also, we, had a, we had a good time too, right? right our, class, awesome. our class wanted to win. I, I, yeah, but Silky, I, I, I feel like, to be honest, I feel like from the coaching st- standpoint, I feel like Creep and Galley got absolutely fucked their first couple of years. Like Creep got his, he, he got, he hurt his ankle. He was out for a couple of weeks, never got a chance to get back. Galley couldn't get a sniff for the first two years. Then he comes out and like leads the league in scoring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. No, like, his, you know what? Like, his second year he played a lot because it was me, him, and Chewy. Yeah. So Galley's Galley's first year he didn't play at all, but Galley's second year we played a lot. Yeah, and then by the third or fourth year, the guy's the sickest yeah. guy in the league. Yeah, he's yeah. gross, dude. He was yeah. so good. Yeah, and we're missing him tonight. And uh yeah, and then we had OC. I don't know. The best game I ever saw was when he had like six pack he drank a six pack and then caught him. <laughs> <laughs> he was leading the PP that night. <laughs> That's all ten minutes before the game and tell him to get there. Was it? <laughs> Wait, so it says he already had a six pack and then they say you're not you're not a health no, he you're playing. Well, yeah, he was he was he was healthy. Well, Frank, you probably know the story better. No, well, I actually I don't know. I don't remember. I, I know that story, Clacker. No, that was, <laughs> was Jibsy, wasn't it? Didn't Jibsy have a yeah. little episode? He, and out. he had he to jib- out. Remember? He had to come out of the lineup, and then uh, OC got the call like 30 minutes before the game was starting, getting the lineup, and he'd already had a six pack in the system. And... <laughs> uh, I tell you though, in college, like if you you didn't play a game, like those guys took it so hard, right? And there would be times you'd have, a, the, some of them would have a couple beers that day when they like the, it's the Saturday and you're done for the weekend, um, because you they they cared and everybody wanted to play because it was so much fun playing there. Right. With all those fans and the atmosphere and you get the band playing and all that shit is wild. <laughs> Dude. One of my favorite things to do was get suspended at least once a year. So I could go to B dubs with Weaver after three games straight, <laughs> hang out, go home, get dressed and go straight to the game. <laughs> well, yeah. it's all, yeah, half off firehouse and then right to the right to the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. and he's so one precious. of the guys that, uh, yeah, I I've never forgotten this moment was that camping trip we've talked about when we all sat around the fire and uh, and he went around. He had we had never skated except for with like broke or the sticks without blades, right? All we had done is bag skated. We didn't actually get to play hockey oh. with pucks and blades. We just skated. Um, which doesn't actually help you play hockey that much, but, um, (laughs) if you can have captains practice and like try and get better at playing hockey. But anyways, when we get there for that camping trip and he had never played with us really, and he just skated with us and he went around the fire and said how everybody played hockey and he had never seen any of us do anything. And he nailed every single guy. And it's true, though. Ever since that night, I realized that the way people walk, the way people talk, how shy they are, how um, confident they are, um, everything makes you the hockey player you are. And people play like their personality. And that fellow that night taught me that. You know? It's a hard, hard scene. Hardy, hardy. I just, I can Hartsy. just see these yeah, things. I can see yeah. these things on the ice that nobody else sees. <laughs> yeah, but why aren't oh, you doing dude. it then? <laughs> His head was down the whole time. He couldn't. He never looked up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, oh, love that yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. beauty. <laughs> love that guy. Uh, that, that guy knew how to get get her going at the firehouse, didn't he? <laughs> oh man, he 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 lived life to the fullest for sure. Like yeah. he knew he took he took hockey seriously for sure. I mean, he wouldn't have gotten a full ride to a D one school by not taking it seriously. But he he and his family, especially his brothers, I mean, they knew how to like live life too and and put in perspective that it's not all don't put all your chips in one thing. You know, go out and enjoy it too. Yeah. No doubt. There's a lot you can do in life. No doubt. Yeah, he lived it. He's a legend too. Like, I mean, think about the stories we've told about that guy. Like, it's 
Well, that's pretty, what it's. There's yeah. all the different classes that you play with and stuff, and like, it's interesting because I think our classes really meshed, but in a strange way. <laughs> like, because you had Vex teaching me, who was the senior, and he's the freshman. <laughs> but like, I was open to learn. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then like weaves and silk and like with silky and stretch, I felt like I had an intro, like a a a relationship that was a little deeper than the rest. But then like um there was Galley and Daryl were as tight as they get. And it was all very I don't know. It was like it just all worked, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Weird. Dude, we it was won like a, a playoff series that year. Right. We did. We had a tough Make regular state. season and we skated a lot of lightnings, but we, we when it came go time we did upset a team, right? And oh, we we did pretty good in that round that nobody gave us a sniff, right? Wasn't it Miami? Yep. Yeah. Beat Lake State, lost Miami. Isn't that where they came back from? Like, we were up by three goals or something, and they scored like four last in a row. three minutes. <laughs> we lost. Yeah. I believe they call it the miracle <laughs> minute there. Yeah. <laughs> Tough break. Yeah. yeah, that was against us. <laughs> yeah. Those guys were so cool, too. They would just – I remember looking at them during warm-ups and like half their team was just sitting on the bench, just hanging out, buckets off. That was it Jones or whatever that Jones, big dude. Jones Davis yeah, or Jones. something. He had good fun. Like, oh, that? The coolest place to play hockey ever. This is crazy. Dude, I just remember we, we like pulled in and they're like, you know, throwing frisbees and like reading books by trees and stuff. Like this is the <laughs> it's like a movie scene, like right. It now. was, like, dude. What is I happening? thought that too. Yeah. Well, don't you remember the rumor? Like, yeah. yeah, I remember the rumor. Yeah. What was the rumor? The, picture, the pictures of the the is that what you're about? <laughs> yeah, 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 to get accepted to the school or to with your application, you 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 put in a picture with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Only attractive people allowed. Um, is that is that what is that why you got offered there? <laughs> they weren't looking at the men class. <laughs> well, you end up in a western. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, I did well there too. <laughs> all right, let's see here. There's a lot we could cover. There's no way we could talk about all this. Um, how about favorite bar um at Western Michigan? Vax, I'm going to start with you. Dude, I didn't even go to the bar. Did he, <laughs> he, <went> to, <laughs> he never went there. I, I went to Wayside like fucking five times in my Western career. The house probably five times also. <laughs> so My favorite thing to do was uh, try to go in on a case of beer with Vax. He'd pay for it. I knew he'd only drink <laughs> one, so then I'd get the rest. Because <laughs> I had no money. <laughs> well played. Well played. The best, the best back story was when he dressed up as jammers for fucking Halloween. <laughs> yeah, the, the watch and the hat. <laughs> All black. All black. That was uh, good. That was uh, good. <laughs> Silky, what was your favorite bar? Firehouse for sure. Kresge? Yeah, Firehouse. That was uh, that was a good spot. I guess Waldo's on pitcher night had some brought out some interesting, oh, right? Moments. But, but yeah. Waldo's pitcher night is tough to do during season. That's an off season event because I think it's Thursdays, wasn't it? Thursdays yeah, or, or a senior senior season when you're not in the lineup is also a good time. To do that. <laughs> <laughs> Me and OC went a couple times, I think, on yeah. Thursday nights there, and then <laughs> it's it, it's like that where stretch was at too like he knew he wasn't getting back in and i think there were some times when the lineup came up saturday he already knew what was happening and that he was gonna go for lunch too <laughs> yeah you know what that's that's a hard thing in college hockey you got like a 30-man roster but there's only 20 guys dressing so you know there's well, a lot actually of guys i would like to vex you're still in the game and training all these up-and-coming kids and they're trying to get places and do things I've found watching when the research team gets hot, how what's going on in the transfer world in NCAA? Because I saw Western has like a handful of transfers from other schools. Yeah, this year. yeah. I, I gotta say, I'm, I, I disagree with that fucking thing. Is like, well, we I, I like think seven it, I, tr- 
So the yeah, you don't get you don't get ice in. time. So all of a sudden you're, you're going to transfer like your first year, and you don't even that's just that. Like you, there's, I don't know that there, there's a lot of transferring going on. I think it's very strange. Well, well dang, that, bullshit. If, if Do you think guys, you would have transferred? I think it's bullshit. What's that? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Do you think with you had the same opportunities and like you can I, see it with like OC and then yourself, like any guys who didn't get a regular shot, it was so unfair to and I get the numbers aspects. You can but only once do what you know you where do. you stand with people, it's hard to change their mind. And that yeah. was what was neat about like because with Galley, the only year I played with him, he never had a sniff, he never played at all. And then I watched the Broncos play years later and they're talking all about Patrick Galvan and how he's leading the CCHA in score. And I'm thinking that is cool shit that he turned that you around. But you and Galley would have been so sick. Well, I think, you know, you know what for me though, was uh, like, I actually did get a pretty good shot. Like that first year, Wally, I was on your line actually in playoffs in that Miami series, I think, or maybe not on your line, but on your power play unit. And, yeah. and I remember like Brooksy and Colhan were, were high on me. And then the next year when Latestu came in, um, I, I like Vex was working with me all summer, got me just shredded. And I came back and Colhan like, looked at me and he's like, okay. He's like, I'm going to give you a shot with Latestu on, on that line. And then I'd like got a high ankle sprain in the last week, uh, right before the season started. And after that, just never got another, another crack, but yeah. That, like, I think I would have got some sort of chance, but yeah. How do you, how do but you get Wally, back after that? But Wally, what prevents guys now from saying, I'm going to go to a lower D one team, tear it up and just transfer up to other schools. Yeah, all these kids going up through juniors now can essentially get fucked to go to these yeah, other that's pretty programs. Shitty. But like, yeah, I do agree for for Krisky's situation or or like uh, whoever OC. you know, OC. Yeah. Like, it's a it's great. It, sh- it shouldn't be like, oh, you lit it up, you can leave now and go to a better school. But how do you regulate that? That's fucking tough. I yeah. I think it it was. I just saw like the research team saw like what the Broncos posted, and they're like, we got this guy coming from this school, this guy coming from this school. And I was like, the brothers we were, you're in it for four years. You know, you're there together. Nobody's coming in and out. Like there were people that did leave when we were there, but they weren't like in it, in it with us. Like they were the guys that, you know, one guy left to try the making the cut like reality show. Right. And it's like, well, if you're going to leave your division one scholarship for that, like good luck, you know? (laughs) Well, you know what? Well, I agree with you. I think they need to go back to what the problem was is door. When we were there, they switched the scholarships to like a four year scholarship to one year renewal. Seriously. So it's like a contract, like pro it's not a four year deal. No, they can cut you after a year. If if you didn't what? perform, they can yeah. yeah. So That's it's just they like Bro. They did that to Bensing, yeah. Yeah. He got fucked, man. I felt so bad for him. That's that situation's yeah. not his fault. He also got lit up on nine goals and ten shots. <laughs> 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 you, you know what? You know you're, what you're though? Right. There weren't many that, second that, chances just, there. You know I'm pretty sure it was it. one game. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was he got in for one game <laughs> and he let in every <laughs> other shot. You know what? Yeah. There was no better Wonderwall player in the guitar in the door. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and long hair. Maybe. He would have ran a buck. <laughs> yeah, but the you know what? The, the, you know what? The college is fucked up. And they made the issue is that they, if they would screw up recruiting, they wouldn't be able to get rid of you. Now it's yeah. become the opposite. The players are jumping. It, it's, yeah. Yeah. And but then the schools can jump too, obviously, if they could get I well, think it, it helps it helps the big schools. It screws up all the like you know what? At the time Western wasn't a you know what? We we were competing every year, but we weren't one of the top end schools. Now they are, like they're doing awesome. But you know what? You recruit a guy, you go out and recruit a guy, you want to try to get a commitment for four years. The both of them should be committed for four years. That's yeah. my opinion. I, I totally agree. And I th- it's almost like the world now where every if things are tough and things aren't easy, you just jump ship and go somewhere else. Like things weren't always easy for everybody there. And um, but same with the coaches probably would have made roster changes in with my class. Um, 
if they could and brought in transfers if they could have, but we were all there and we all like figured it out and we're in it. We tried to be in it together. Right. Like, uh, but that's pro, right? They might as well go pro then. Why? You that's what, college? that's what it sounds like it is. And that's what I see this transfer stuff happening. And it's like NCAA has now become like pro. And like when you're raising puppies and raising kids, like Vex would be, and I try to do in small town, middle of nowhere, and I'm trying to make hockey people. It's like, well, what would I recommend? Is it OHL now, or is it NCAA? Because NCAA seems di- very different than what it used to be, but I would have said NCAA all day long before all this. I don't know. No, no, no but the Wally, they're talking about... I, just, I it's, the same, it's the same opportunity. Now you get to go to college, you get to choose what you want to do, and you can make some money potentially on NIL. Oh, I so think it's, it's like, cool they can make money. Oh, That's it's, cool. It's, like the minor, like the major junior stuff and the college stuff is so much more close. Like that's why there's getting, there's so many more guys in the NCAA that are making it to pro is because they have these opportunities. So I don't know. Well, I, silky. I, I, think, I don't think it's the worst thing. Like I said, I'm doing this too. So I'm running a couple of different teams right now. And I, what the older ages, they're starting to say that they, they may let major junior guys go call go college. Yeah. So that's gonna fucking throw a whole different wrench in the game. That that's that if if that yeah. if that's not a rule where once you play your first game in the OHL that you yeah if that changed, there's gonna be kids moving all over the place. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. I uh I don't know. It like for me, I grew up in a small town where you were a team and you were a team for a while, and then Western Michigan was the same. You were brothers for four years. Um, things didn't change. Pro, I got there. It was totally different. I had a hard time adjusting. The way I look at hockey is not the way it's going. Everything's about the individuals. Everything's about them making it. It's not about the team. It's not about winning as a team. It's about the individuals. And it seems like it's just going more that way. All. Yeah, Wally. So, like, I again, I I got cut off during some of the earlier stuff, but no. So, like, I'm running an organization. I'm helping you running an organization right now. What is and it? It's, it's oh, so the the old Pittsburgh Hornets organization here in Pittsburgh. It's, it was still Mount Lebanon, but the um, the other teams here, like our old teams, have been transferred. Like, there's a couple of really good organ AAA organizations, but. Like growing up, like these organizations were all Pittsburgh or regional kids. And now there's recruiting. So they don't care about like we would play I, I would go dust Bex in St. Louis. And then we'll go with, <laughs> uh, like, you know what? You would play every city. Like every city would have like their team, right? So like you would go play silver or oh, it'd be honey. Like it was and honey it would be their season. town and their city and their yeah. the same people. And, and, it was, but that's not the way it is anymore. So, like, right now, once you get to, like, 13 years old, they start recruiting. So, like, yeah, we got three Pittsburgh kids, but 13 kids from all over the country that we now bill it here at 13. I'm like, that's crazy. I'm like, <laughs> that's crazy. Wild. And they're all chasing my hockey rankings. I'm like, well, what the fuck is in my hockey? Some guy made a computer jerk-off program that now tells you <laughs> where you ranked. Yeah, 100%. Like, uh, like, like, what happened to developing kids? Like, right. w- w- that's what. So, like, we used to say, like, yeah, we would try, like, but now, like the like, character, you... the people, like, what they're about, like, I don't know. I, for me, I live in the middle of nowhere, and we're a double B center B. Um, but like, we're a small town. Everybody knows each other, and like. Once that season's over, we see each other around town. You see your kids at the grocery store. You see them everywhere. I don't think that's hockey anywhere else anymore. I think I'm living in the 90s, and everyone else is playing hockey the way they think it should be, and I'm raising puppies right, <laughs> and everybody can all go fuck off. <laughs> no, Wally, no, so off. that's what I – no, Wally, that's what I've done. So, like, <clears throat> we haven't sent our groups AAA yet because, like, we're keeping our kids within a certain region and they're playing 60 games a year, which is insane. But every other team's playing 70, 80 games a year, traveling all over the country. I'm like, 
guys, <laughs> let's go practice. We, uh, I'm calling Vex this week. I'm like, send me some workout. Let's let's go, let's work on these guys' development. Like, we don't need to send all this stuff. It's in, it's it's insane. Uh, 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 well, How many little have you run over in your practices, Clacker? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. How many have you buried yeah. with a puck, shooting guys, high know, and wide? Give me a range, like 50 to 100. <laughs> There is, <laughs> there's no way that you haven't laid a kid out. There's uh, there's no a way. Million, hit him with a slap shot, run him over. There's got to sure. be something. High there's and wide million. glove side, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I felt so bad this week. Like, so we first week of practices, one of the little guys forgot his skates, and he's we're doing a skating drill to warm up. And we're just shooting putts down the ice, like to get him to the other end. The kid that had the red forgot his skates had his rental skates on for five minutes. I smoked him in the skates, wiped down by the <laughs> There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. You gotta learn. <laughs> Don't forget yeah. your skates. Yep. Hey, hey, since we're on the, the minor hockey topic, Vex, I got a I got a topic for you and Toaf to uh discuss someday yeah and it's uh when like you're at the 8u or 10u level you level i only know 8u but um here's an example we we were in this intense game and uh it was a tournament style and we were playing this wenashi team who was just they ran the floor with us the year before they scored 10 it was 10 to 1 we lost but their kids were crushing us like literally cross-checking us just dominating us physically and Fast forward to this past season, it, the, the table kind of turned and we, we beat them 8-1, but their kids were still going at it. But then my kids were like blowing them up. And then the coach started yelling at me and I'm just like, man, I <laughs> like I'm trying to teach the kids, you know, you, you, you can't cross check them in the head. Just kind of keep your hands in tight. Keep the stick, maybe lengthen your hands out a little bit, separate your hands, just keep a little more just whammy so that, whammy yeah <laughs> whammy. A little whammy, like that little stuff but uh you know i also have like i i try to recruit as many parents as i can because more you guys know the more help you have the, the easier it is um so i i almost like we have 10 kids on our team and i re- had like five coaches on the bench it was ridiculous but um uh, like one time our captain who was unreal blew some kid up because they were going after him the entire game and right away, the like three of them, the, the the parent coaches were like yelling, like, "You gotta sit him. That's unacceptable." But at the same time, I'm kind of like in my head. I keep quiet to myself. I wait till they come to the bench and I whisper in their ear. But I'm just like, like I think that's I too know. many it's... cooks in your kitchen, big guy. That for, you you for asked sure, Vex, but... you asked Vex, no. but like you're taking any parent you want. Like for me, no, no, no. That's I not, no, that's like I question, I want though. to make sure that it's the same message. And sometimes when a guy blows the yeah. guy up, it's it's not that they really want to blow the guy up. It's that they're really competitive. And maybe you're winning or losing the game. And maybe, maybe they needed to blow the kid up. Break right? Him. Maybe that's, it just that's, happened. That's like, I'm, Franco. I'm, I'm just curious to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, so, dude. Franco, we'll blow him up. Franco, Love it. Franco, I'm running, I run Love our it. 8U program and our 10U program. I'm calling you after. We can talk about it. Okay. <laughs> you get so, get it's, 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 it's it's like it's like the rever- it's like the reverse you. hit though vex that we were talking yeah. about was my son would be getting some attention in our league and when i was coaching him i said well when you have the puck the ref usually doesn't call a penalty <laughs> so a couple people went to get in his way and holy moly <laughs> like He's he he's competing and he's trying Smart. to win. And then when I say that to him, then he really blew a couple kids up. And I was like, oh, good. You know, the reverse shoulders back. <laughs> good. Hockey is a man's game. Let's, let's right keep it that way. You know? I just think it'd be a, a fun topic for you and Toph to just kind of shoot the shit yeah, about. I love it, man. Like I, I, I have a total separate different approach of being a player uh, as a coach. I'm a lot more quiet as a coach. And the other guy's chirping like under his breath, kind of thing. And we're on the same bench because it's yeah. you. Know? Yeah, yeah. Franco, like, all right, man. Franco, all right. my a couple of years ago, I had that in AU in our championship game. Oh, uh, we had parents fighting in the stand. It, it's the most yeah. ridiculous. The parents AU. get so fired up. The pair, I have two Why? parents fighting, leaving the stand. <sighs> they got ejected by police in an AU game. So, wow. And this is still. So, 
everything's always awesome and everything's team. And then I go and win a golf tournament Friday night <laughs> and Colby's been playing baseball and um, they've had a team. The coach has made it a team. Everybody's a team. The culture's awesome. They show up, they're cheering for each other. They're cheering each other on. Uh, they get a bit mopey if they start losing, but that's kids. But like, then they're in their year end tournament. They're trying to win. The coach is trying to win. So then he doesn't play all the kids evenly. And we have a couple parents go up to the coach in front of all the kids, in front of both teams, in front of all the parents. I'm at a golf tournament, so I'm not there to witness this and get to like try and distract or not let this happen. So this all happens when I'm not there. And then this is the first game of the tournament. And as soon as Lisa told me about it, she's like, our team's done. I'm like, yeah, you're right. We're done. Like, you can't have that going on with kids and getting sidetracked. And then the next two games, we got absolutely throttled and the season was over. And to think that it was the parents that ruined the vibe of the team and the culture of the team is disheartening because the boys had everything they needed and they had, they were well, a squad why? and they were playing over their head because they were a team. They were playing better because they cared about each other. And then the adults messed it up. And then it was tough to watch the next two games, but I knew what I was going to watch and they got absolutely throttled. <laughs> Wally, but that's the biggest issue right now is like, uh, I was on calls for two hours tonight and I was like losing my mind. He's like, <laughs> yeah, you like I this. no so within our, the organization we're talking to families like our one of our lower teams lost their goaltender so you're recruiting this, kids to get built <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i'm building kids now no so we started talking to this this family and we're like, jimmy johns? oh jimmy johns yeah they're coming they're delivering you guys are, i'll send it to you 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 send it out justin <laughs> anyways jimmy johns in 10 minutes ready to roll <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's Church, but he loved those Jimmy Johns, and then he called <laughs> Campus Kitchen. Oh, I do remember Campus that. Kitchen. Oh, Campus a Kitchen's a great spot. So <clears throat> the Broncos found out about that through Dave Cousineau, right? Like Beer Darts was Mike Erickson. Campus Kitchen was Dave Cousineau, and he got the boys fired up there. I remember taking Beckham, my dog, to the to Campus Kitchen. He'd let me. They'd let me walk right in with my dog, and he'd sit there at the booth with us while we're eating Chinese. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> it's fancy now. I'm really? Telling, when we went back, yeah. When we went back a couple years ago, it's all fancy now. It's different. Well, you said you said Waldo's was gone too, and Silky said that's not true. <laughs> so <we'll> <laughs> and <laughs> you think Campus <laughs> Kitchen is nice? That's weird because as well, long as they're still well, making the crab rag good. <laughs> Well, it might have been a long weekend. I already Googled it. Waldo's is there. Somehow we missed it. <laughs> <laughs> to bring it full circle, though, about parents, though, like, we had all, we had great parents. Like, I remember Franco's mom used to come in with his sister. Vex's yeah. parents always came in. Krisky's parents were amazing. You, you and your dad had the same haircut, like Stretch would say. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's what it's all about. Is you got but good and it them. does matter it, 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 who it, the it, parents it, it, are it and what they're so about like, matter. Like, that's what that's what made us like so fun. Is like we have good families behind us that like helped us. Like push I'm still waiting for. Forward, I'm, right? I'm still sitting here waiting for Bex's mom to send me more puppy chow. For years. No, yeah. but like when we talk about that Halloween night, I have pictures of my parents at that Halloween party. Like. 100%. Daryl's parents were there. Yancey's parents were there. Stretch's sure. parents Pierce's. were come, and it's like everybody. My parents was... were there too, actually. Right? So <laughs> they, told... they still talk about that party too, and, <laughs> and it it was epic. And that's when it's a hockey family. When like yeah. I don't know, but that's the parents that their kids end up playing NCAA at Western Michigan is the parents were having fun and enjoying the game and getting to know the people instead of worrying about themselves. <laughs> you know, I know. I think that, I think that's when creep earned his name that night. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, speaking of Jeff Pierce, was that the night? Like, um, well, we had a stripper pole in our, <laughs> right. In well, our, we, we say, we say, that, probably just stop it right. There. Well, <laughs> for yeah. so, so it's a small world it's in the bad. Bronco Put community. In that. And yeah, so there's a small got a really a sm jealous Welsh wife. She'll crush me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, Welsh are crazy. No, but um, 
So, like, it's it wasn't our poll. We didn't buy it. Mike Mantua, the goalie before you fellas, <laughs> went to the tap room or the wide bar, whatever it was at that point. Wide and- bar. He had literally had a thing on his chest and said, watch what you can make people do. And it said, help us buy a stripper pole. And he wore this bib the whole night with a thing to put money in. And come the end of that night, he had enough money to buy a stripper pole. And he did. And then he left Western Michigan and the stripper pole came into our apartment. And then we had a stripper pole in our apartment. It it was strange, but it worked well as like a coffee table well we appreciate you leaving that we can send you pictures later of creep on that pole so there's the, so... could he work the pole especially if he's a health bob <laughs> hey creep were you uh, at lunch and then just working the pole or what that pole, yeah no, Bex that had me of... <laughs> Bex had me doing a, a workout routine on the pole <laughs> <laughs> With his leather, leather gloves, I still have those pigs creep. <laughs> you know, what's wild about that stripper pole is that it ended up at Ansel's and and Piercy's, I think, right? Oh, and then those, those I don't guys know are where doing it went after that. Too, so it came back. It came back, to us. it came back to us. It came back to you, and then it after came back. that, my wife lived in Ansel and Piercy and Lesbo's house. Oh, like randomly yeah with so them. it was like this weird like full circle moment i was like where'd you live your senior year and she's like oh i lived at this place like oh my god like yeah, um, yeah i remember that well, and that's the thing though is it takes a guy to go out there and do something like mike mantua did and said yeah. like i want a stripper pole and i'm gonna go out and make this happen and he did he went out there and got her done right <laughs> we had it to, we had it in our apartment for two years <laughs> I wonder if it's still around. <laughs> uh, that would be something. <laughs> okay. It'd just be like Leonidas still kicking around somewhere. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm going to ask a boring question for all, you know, just so I can go get a beer out of the shed because it's so far away now. Uh, and I'm going to start with Krisky. Favorite Uh-oh. college barn to play at and why? And then you guys can go around while I go grab a beer and I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I guess outside of Lawson, I, I actually thought Lawson was my favorite just because of the, the hometown fans there. But, uh, geez, favorite one, I guess, I guess probably Michigan. That was Yoast is such a cool place too. So much history there. Um, Cool student section. I remember them chanting at uh, Kevin Labatt, um, the one game. Uh, I think it was during like opening lineups, and they were like uh, chanting Molson's better at Kevin Labatt. So <laughs> they had some pretty funny stuff. <laughs> I totally forgot about Bubs. He's unreal. What a guy he guy. Bobble, yeah. yeah. What a beauty. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that place is cool. Job, like five years ago. Yeah. Was that- he helped me get a job like five years ago. He was working for a company that I was working with. He's in sales and I like talked to him and he like gave me some tips and stuff. And it was, it was hilarious. Yeah. What a so, yeah. I he remember, like, I remember when I was, I was in Vegas my first year and uh, we were playing against Utah Grizzly. And so I reached out to Bubs and we ended up partying all night and we still had the game the next night, but somehow like towards the end of the night, we ended up on top of some random person's roof drinking a beer smoking a blunt <laughs> Frank, you, you played in vegas yeah Something my first right. year was in vegas yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gave me some spice and i almost passed out that is ridiculous <laughs> well i'm back and this doesn't sound like the nicest college barns you played <laughs> <laughs> oh, <crack. laughs> <I> re- <laughs> bob's jeepers that uh so when the research teams get hot, like if someone looked me up, there's Daryl Moore, but um, I think Kevin Labatt, I played the, as much hockey with as anybody. Um, he is a beauty. Uh, awesome. Where where is where is Bats now? Where is he at? Um, like Vale, Colorado awesome. area, I think. Um, I tried to get him on, but he says he's not that much of a talker. I don't know why, because well. <laughs> 
we played with the Elmire Sugar Kings together. We almost won it all. And then we both went to Western Michigan together. And when we played in Elmira, he was my next door neighbor to like my parents' house. He lived next door. That's well, 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 Wally, you know what? I, I think to your comment earlier, I think this summer, set the day. Well, we have the alumni thing. Let's get everybody back. Mm-hmm. It's been what? Four years, but seriously, that's why I'm you, saying. For you, for I think you, we 12, need to. I think 20. we need to get everybody back, and I think all the Broncos that are listening to this, um, whatever class you were, whether you're as old as balls like Daryl Andrews and Joel Irving that have came on, Swerve and Irving, um, if you're as old as balls as them and you've never been back, if you're my class and you've never been back, if you're your class. I think we should blow the roof off this thing. You know? Well, you know what? You, I know it's hard for some guys during the summer, especially like Vax for his training. Let, let's pick a weekend the guys are playing. Let's meet. Yeah, like, we um, I would love to see a game, man. I would love yeah, to see a game. And what I actually was thinking, like speaking of the, once you get into a hockey season, it's very hard when you're coaching and your kids are playing. Yeah. Um, I thought it'd be really neat to like take my team there to watch a game. Right. Well, the, I w- we we're playing. That's what I said. We're gonna play actually at Notre Dame. It's in like January. I'm gonna bring the guys up, but let's let's try to talk to the alumni organization and try to get it set up so that we go during the season. Like, let's make let's pick a weekend during the season that everybody goes back. It's it'd more- be neat to I see a God- hockey game. It'd be neat for my kids to see a hockey game. Like, like yeah, I like, haven't been like, back. Yeah, like, who gives that. a shit about? Pl- let's who gives a shit about going playing a golf game in July. Like, let's yeah, because my wife's birthday t- is is that same week all time, and I have to say right now, I didn't mean to say my wife is a jealous Welsh lady. I love you so much, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's and he's almost done at Lowe's. She's the <laughs> Close pretty soon, man. I gotta get out of here. Hey, Franco, I had a story I wanted to tell tonight. I've been holding my tongue all night, so I'll hold it till after the thing's done. <laughs> Uh, is this a one you can't tell on the pod? You got to know where you're at. So, you know? uh, we'll, we'll do a regroup after the pod to tell this story with Creep. This is my favorite Creep story. He knows it. Um. Okay. Oh, man. More serious questions. Vex, were you happy with the Burnham's uh, cafeteria situation <laughs> and the provo- pro- food provided for the athletes say, no, it was terrible. <laughs> it was absolute ass. You always, you always had hair in your food too. Right? Uh, shut the oh, up, every time. I got to still eat after this. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. That ain't right. Uh, uh, all you drink is protein shakes. Like- Don't eat your hair. <laughs> late night carry out vex we get like six pb and j's like 10 like hard boiled eggs a bunch of chocolate milk like he was such like, a always, far walk like, though yeah. such a far walk that sucked but you know what you i was thinking earlier those Jimmy were good Johnson times those yeah were good time. those yeah, were good times though man the dorms were hilarious the, Bo, the dorms Bo, are hilarious what was like, Bo, Bo trossett <laughs> oh Bo. Bo dizzle yeah. Bo <laughs> that guy's I, like a he, ceo now I what? ran into him. I ran into him of... in uh, Bellingham, actually. Yeah, did you? That's where he's from, right? Stopped, we stopped like at some, or like, I don't even know who you guys are talking about. I feel like I've lost complete control. <laughs> <laughs> you went to you went to Aslan, Krisky? Yeah. Yeah. We walked yeah, in there, owns... and then, yeah, he owns it. He walked up, and we, like, made eye contact. I was like, Bo? Oh, <laughs> Haven't no, seen him in 20, 15 years. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, he Dude, remembered it. it his, his brewery was on uh, Alaska Airlines magazine, like in the little the thing. There's That's four awesome. of them. That's cool. Yeah. That's it's really sick. cool. Yeah. Wow, good for him. And who was this guy to you guys? Uh, he tried he out lived. for the team. <laughs> <laughs> Do you He's remember a CEO, not a hockey team? player, you know? Frank, remember him working out outside of our apartment? <laughs> 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 Was <laughs> summer one, summer one. I remember. Yeah, I, with us that I, summer, right? I was living with you guys that summer. Summer one. Yeah. I remember that. Dude, he's the man. Bo is the fucking man. He Wasn't was he sleeping on man. the futon? Was Wasn't he on the futon? I think he was on that outside in the rain. <laughs> this Bo oh, really God, made uh, an the impact. Four, the four by four little square yeah. like concrete thing patio outside <laughs> our door. He was doing files out there for like twenty minutes. Comes in, grabs a beer, and 
Smoke a joint. <laughs> Who has a hard one today? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to make it, boys. I think I got a chance as a walk on. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. <laughs> well, the only walk on was half. half. <laughs> oh, yeah. Half. Oh, he was well, in great, I, great house. I still remember that freshman year. We sat there watching those guys. Like, Jammer gave him like twenty fucking uh, lightnings in a row. He Dude. murdered him. Oh, yeah. Uh, um. Do you remember having the puke buckets on the ice though? Like he would. I remember him putting a bucket down at center ice, and then sitting in a chair and watching us skate lightnings. <laughs> do you remember that? Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. well, that was just skate. for you seniors. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> No, I saw Galley puke like every other practice that first year. Galley <laughs> <laughs> puked a lot. Yeah. I was, it was, uh, I, I wasn't a puker, but like I felt more like a fainter when we'd start doing those things, right? Like I didn't know when I'd be going down. I'm like, I'm going to keep going, but I think I'm going down like any second here. Didn't, I kept getting Yance, through it. I don't know Yance how it all worked get out. Shocked back to life huh? at one point. Didn't Yance have to get shocked back to life like before we came? That is correct. Yeah. He, yeah, uh, he had like a heart attack. They got the well, they got they the, I they kept that one pretty quiet. I don't think that oh, one's got out it. much, but Sorry, um they did get yeah. the paddles out know. and um shock him back <laughs> to life after <laughs> we ran uh miles, miles after losing this season. Um and they don't they're not that thrilled with how you executed the hockey matches. So then they would make you run really far. And when we got to the finish line and everybody like gave it all they got, cause we're all competitive and we're all trying to not look bad and look like we're in it. Um, everybody gave her and then they said, okay, turn around and do it again. And uh, didn't go that good. <laughs> Well, you know what? Uh, my, my, my roommate almost died, and we, <laughs> he hung the shirt that they cut <laughs> off him and had to paddle him. He hung it up in his room. The rest That's of unreal. The <laughs> I still, I, you know what? The one guy I couldn't believe is like, Gally would go to the Waldos the night before, show up at the two mile run, and Savage. just crush, just wow. crush us. Dude, we had a bunch of mutants in our class. Our <laughs> class was a bunch of fucking mutants. And we just had normal people in my class. You ask us to run two miles in 12 minutes, it's just not going to happen. I think Gally was finishing at like 10 minutes and 15 seconds, and we're all just And strong. then that just makes everybody look bad. Well, Frank running it at 240 in like 11, whatever the fuck he ran it. <laughs> then, you, then everybody's like, fuck, fuck, Frank's too fucking 40. If Frank's doing it at 240, we should all be able to do it at 195 or 205 or whatever you are. This guy's 240. But some people are runners. Happening? Some people are <laughs> hockey players, not runners. I'm yeah, not a no. runner. I never said I was. I never went to Western Michigan saying I want to be part of the cross country club. I actually would rather be a hockey player and do sprints. Well, <laughs> well I, I, I don't think I don't think you shot a gym through your senior year either. Oh, buddy, <laughs> it was. Uh, it's that. That's untrue. Um, we saw lots of gyms. <laughs> well, my favorite, my favorite yeah. part about Wally in the gym after our senior year is that he had this stopwatch around his neck, and he was timing <laughs> between his sets. And I think that was a Vex thing. And that was the first time I ever saw you like really try in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> I wow. still remember the day that Jen was just giving it to Frank, and he was just—I I can't remember—he's like in four eighty-five, just crushing squats. Oh, I my intestines were going to come out of my butt. That was ridiculous. Dude. But, like, do you think that's healthy? You were squatting 485 pounds. Like, do you think that's healthy? I don't Maybe more. Dude, he squatted over 500 pounds, 15 reps. I watched it. I watched it. He was like, no, we're, yeah. stop, we're stopping this. And I yeah. was like, yeah, what the I... fuck just happened? <laughs> Well, like, yeah. like why? I've like, had like three knee surgeries since I retired, and my <laughs> back's all mangled. And, oh, it's awesome. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can hardly tell why. <laughs> but like, to be, to be honest, out. there was a lot of injuries in the weight room back then. It, when we were at Western Michigan, there was a lot of injuries from running too far and in the weight room. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Weaver was running backwards during a two mile. <laughs> <laughs> OC was laying on the ground in the gym because his back was broken. <laughs> well, that, that, that was because he 
play too much. Well, OC was too much Xbox. We know that. But <laughs> OC. Oh, God. What a body that guy had. <laughs> you guys, you guys like are into body shaving, aren't you? <laughs> you, you've already gone through our, my whole class, and now you're in the whole Because we body shamed ourselves yeah, just as much. Yeah. Well, well, that's the punch pictures they're ready in the walls. So who's body? The boys of summer. <laughs> I, that's, that's... You guys should have seen the boys of summer pictures before you got there. You wouldn't believe it. We were jacked up. You could call it yoked. <laughs> it's true, like, yeah. Don't shake your head at me. It's Nobody true. Nobody believes that. <laughs> I am true. happy to hear. Oh, Silky, nobody believes that, that, Molly. It's true. Silky, I'm happy to hear that uh, things haven't changed with Vax, that he's still like on uh, a big party night, is including his own wedding, that he's still asking if you want to go for a workout. <laughs> hey, he showed up. He just didn't work right. out. It's all about consistency, baby. It's all about consistency. Right. It's never changed. It, never changed. It's, you know what? You I know what? Vex can, Vex can lift a thousand pounds, but he's still a pussy. So, uh, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I Man, would lose I a fight to you. You fought 300 times in the span of a year. Fuck I did you. choke off my basement one time. That was it. One time. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Frank, remember when you wrestle in the fuck in your apartment? You remember we wrestled a couple times? Yeah, with my yeah, mattress I, on the floor. I, just just throwing me around 240. <laughs> What's with you mutants and wanting to wrestle and stuff? Because I heard about it in like with other teams, the big fellas that are like they like to get wrestling. It's like I I never really had that interest. I'd rather play beer fucking, darts. I was a big boy, but I would never wrestle any of my roommates. <laughs> like, Gally or Beaver. I was so scared. They're all going to turn into real fights for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, that's because they're all busy you're... fighting each other at some point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just want to know part of it. It's like, where am I? Yeah. So good. I totally have lost control of my notes and what we we're going to talk about, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um so uh one note i got written down though is like the pro first college i found it very hard leaving western michigan when i had had my brothers for the four years and i was part of it and then i got to pro and it wasn't the same thing everybody was doing their thing and uh there were some guys that made it a team some guys that didn't um and then i just wrote down money versus brothers and like I found it interesting that I had played hockey my whole career through my childhood NCAA. It wasn't really about getting the school. It was about playing hockey, but like we were all brothers in a family. And then I got to pro and it was just totally different experience. Totally. You know, like the two on one and the guy looks at you and you're like, I saw you see me open and you didn't pass that. That's weird. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Weird stuff. I guess Krisky, you you just went back to senior. You probably didn't deal with that, eh? Everybody was just in it to win it. <laughs> yeah, I went back and and got into the beer league game. So uh, I, I get my fair share of lookoffs in beer league, but probably more <laughs> more so on the skill side. Are you still doing it? <laughs> no, no. COVID kind of put an end to our league, and I I get out for like the odd game once in a while. That's about it. I have no interest at all. You know what I, you know what happened though? I had, uh, we had a like sewage backup in our house and my hockey gear, all my Western Michigan stuff just got totally like a month ago. I'm rattled, but I get a brand new bag of gear. So I was like in the sports store the other day, like insurance is going to cover it. And I'm like, what the what the fuck is this stuff like this is like a suit now like what is hockey gear <laughs> hey just call dion is he still around <laughs> dion gonna, gonna dion. cast yeah. an order from dion yeah exactly actually he was out here like three years ago he came out to Kelowna, and he was just by solo by himself i went for a beer with him he was mm -hmm. uh just backpacking or like going on hikes and different things but yeah it's cool seeing him and it's always exactly. nice reconnecting with everybody. And he was, he was a beauty. Yeah. He was, he's a good equipment manager. And the, I can see in your eyes that uh, just the mention of pitter patter. <laughs> no, <it's just> gonna <laughs> say you me on the, um, You're so jealous of his calves still. You just wish you had. I was going to say oh, something about his calves. 
Who's yeah, calves? I, Who has nice I calves? The golf yeah. and you know, his calves are still huge. Yeah. Dion, uh, you know, always give me shit I about laugh. my calves. Dion always I had laugh. nicer calves than you. He's got oh, the dude, biggest calves ever. Monster. Frank, Frank, all he could chirp me about back then, because I was so shredded, was that I didn't have big calves. <laughs> and he knew <laughs> to attack my heart. You got to find time. something. Yeah. Uh, God, I was like, God buddy. damn it. I can't say anything back. You're fat. You're you're fat. <laughs> oh, facts. Let's be honest. Fucking Big Bird has bigger calves than you. Like you still do. You no, no they're bigger now, no. baby. You know oh, what this is bringing back now. memories of though is like and, when you guys uh, were coming there was when we were right into Entourage in our apartment, oh, and yeah. it was that one guy that had the small calves in that John show. And John, 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 Frank John, made a John. Facebook page for my calves. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Where, Find where Jeff Lavecchio's yeah. Lost Calves Fund, he called it. <laughs> and it was a picture of flamingo legs. <laughs> where are Jeff oh, Lavecchio's calves? Oh, I need to get back on Facebook. I forgot <laughs> about that. I don't know. <sighs> I think that page is still there. I'll probably like it tomorrow. Because I made something like Chris Frank has hovercraft feet or something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and by the way, Vex, speaking of uh, like how I don't feel like playing hockey, I mean like beer league, as I do enjoy it sometimes. I When I was skating with O'Reilly and they had all these young pros out and they needed a guy to make a four on four, and I went out in a track suit and ran amok, still had it. <laughs> um, it. But uh, the goalie we were shooting on said to say hi to you, Matt Dalton. Oh yeah, I played with him and I played against him uh in Asia too. Dude, that guy he can goal. He, he he was so good, dude. He played in uh he played for Korea in the Olympics. He's still he's because he was just playing making, for them. Yeah. Is he really? Oh my god. He's dude, still he's going made, to Korea. He's going he's again. probably made millions. I'm gonna chat with him while he's in, in Korea. Korea. Uh he's going wow. back and I'm gonna chat with him again because he's Tell a good so what's dude. Up, man. Yeah, yeah, great dude. Tell me so what's up, dude. I guarantee you he's made like a couple million playing in Korea. That is amazing. That's amazing. And nobody would know about it. <laughs> no, dude. You know? He's got he's, he's just got a guy that went over to Asia and he's gonna show back up and yeah. But like dude, yeah. Good, uh, good goalie though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Good player. Good for him. Um, okay. Let's see here. Clacker. Remember your recruiting trip to Western Michigan? Have we already talked about it? We did. I said I thought I was getting punked because I went to, I oh. went to the game. I went to the and, game. Oh, because you, you were saying my to... you were body shaming me again. Yeah, I am. Like I, I went to the game. I'm like, oh, they won the game. I went to a party. I'm like, these can't be the guys that just won this game. <laughs> <laughs> but we did. <laughs> I, I, I thought they took me the, I thought they took me the club team. <laughs> That's that just hurts. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Kresge, you remember your trip? Yeah, I do. I um, I got stuck. It was like je- or probably February when I came out, and it was like a complete snowstorm. And I was playing in Williams Lake, and it was tiny little airport, and I was like, I don't know. It was like a forty-eight hour travel excursion to get to Kalamazoo, and. Uh, I got there and I ended up getting like one day there. It was supposed to be like the whole weekend, but uh, took so long to get there. And I remember, I think I went to, it actually was Super Bowl Sunday. I remember that Eagles and I forget who they were playing that year, 2005 anyway. And uh, it was back at, I want to say Chewy's apartment maybe. And uh, we watched a bit of the Super Bowl Ansel and those guys took me there and had a few and uh yeah it was good i was sold you definitely remember your recruiting trips like it's their time to shine right and uh i was asked to take out quite a few guys um and you know i would take it to heart whether or not the guy would come or not because i'd try and make it as fun as i possibly could (laughs) some people weren't as into fun as me i guess (laughs) when i I went online 
Go Too bad for all the uh, recruits that Vex had to take out and probably took them into the gym. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Probably him made him work shake. out and have protein shakes. It's like, yeah, this is yeah, college yeah, hockey. Uh, yeah. uh, Game pretty sure changed. I, pretty sure I had a 100% success rate. Pretty sure I had 100% you know success rate. You know, is that's that right? You think you had a 100% success rate? Because Of the guys I took out? Yeah. Like, we're, no, you I, know I was talking. Frank and I. If I got Frank and I take 12. these guys out to the girls. We would have won this fucking the CCHA <laughs> like five times. I got I got every recruit that came on a trip. I think maybe there was one that didn't. There might and how many are we names, talking names, here? Name names. This is bullshit. Name yeah, names. bro. I don't remember. I know Slater. Oh was yeah, one of them. they were oh, there though. Hundred percent, but they were there. You For know the sure guy Slater. I didn't get? That's because, guy, uh, yeah, but that's only because you and Slats are the same human being. The same <laughs> human being. You're right. Yeah, well, exactly. And, and, Dude, <laughs> there was more. There was more for sure. So, hey, hey, on my recruiting trip, I just remember the only thing I really remember was I met I met Mo. I remember meeting Mo. Um, and I think I met you too, Wally. Maybe. And I, I was like, that guy's going to win the Hobie. What? <laughs> and uh, they brought me to the dorms and it was like Pierce and Ansel and bicycle and like that i like that was supposed to sell me as those three retards just like <laughs> chirping each other non-stop and like, okay. I was like this, what's happening right now <laughs> it was you know, awesome that, it was awesome that was the big the problem if they would have let me and frank take him out and actually pick up girls we, we would have <laughs> had the best fucking team in cchj <laughs> But oh, it's like yeah. it's like every kid that comes in, I think the coaches have to know what they're into and what they're about because who they would put them with is going to change their experience. I think Vex's recruiting trip is going to be different than mine, and it's <laughs> different than with Pierce and Bicek, and everybody's would be different. There was definitely one time that it's come up before where a kid came in from, I believe, out West Canada, and we were having a time and it was like a full blown college party in the spring semester. And I'd got him into a bar. It's like a 17, 18 year old. We had had the time at the tap room and then there's a big storm. And I like might've taken my clothes off and like slid through the big puddles and like made like splashes and like, then he like thought it was funny and was having a time and took pictures of like it all happening. And I'm just picturing him getting home and his parents like, so how was it? <laughs> and then if they saw the pictures, I could see why he did come, <laughs> 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 but I did my best. I put my best foot forward at a great night. <laughs> hey, hey, Wally, can I, can I ask a question to, uh, I also quick? recruited Mike Erickson, your captain. So, you know, they unreal. told me, they said, no, there's no budget tonight. We need him. We're going to bring him here and you're going to get her done tonight. And, I tell you, you should have seen me at 6 a.m. yoga the next day. I was yeah. there and I participated. I wasn't very successful at it. <laughs> hey, before you, you I go. You were successful at the best of times, Wally. Well, I had wet the bed and then I got up and did yoga at 6 a.m. <laughs> Wally, before I and go. And you know I what? Gotta, he became go, our man. captain the next year. Sorry. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, I, I got to go, man. But I, I got to know uh, our junior year. That uh, that freshies week, we had a big Donnybrook at uh, at Frat Village. I don't remember how it started. I wasn't even there. Clacker, how did all that start? Uh, I didn't. Even, I wasn't going to bring this up tonight. Do you actually want to bring yeah, this up? Yeah, yeah. No, it came up before. Jerry Coon said that's one of his first experiences of college oh. is showing up and. Chris Frank is just beating the wheels off of frat boys. It's like that's I wasn't interesting. Involved. I wasn't involved. I wasn't there with Clacker and those guys. No, I I was involved. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll give the whole story. So we decided that it was a good night to take all the boys to the frat bar with the frat house to have a good night. Creep, you were there. Why are you going so to frat cool. houses? We did that like once or twice, and it's just wasn't. I mean, it's a it's an God. experience. It no, is. no, no, I no. I don't think I no, was no. there actually. No, no, I was buddies with a bunch of the frat guys because we would pick up their girls and then we'd go back. 
<laughs> so we were, we're all at their, they, they invited us. They, they would invite us to their parties. I think the freshman year, Mensing and Cali were actually like trying to like get into the frat for a couple of weeks. <laughs> but regardless, <laughs> so we're we're at the we're at the party, we're having a great time, uh, and we brought the freshmen, and the freshmen started going started mouthing off, especially little uh, Mister Flink. Oh yeah, <laughs> John so we had a couple. So we're in the middle of this party, and it was like early in the summer. And there wasn't many guys at the campus. So we're all going off. And they decided to throw a big party. So they invited us to the party. And we brought all our freshmen there because we're all there for summer training. And then uh, Link decided that one guy called him a fag. And he decided to start mouthing off in the middle of the party. To, again, there's like five of us to like 40 of them. And then I'm I'm in the middle and I'm trying to separate the two groups. I'm like, listen, we're all friends. Don't worry about it. And some guy called, started making fun of Flink because he's short with the shaved head. <laughs> <laughs> and and Flink thought it was tough coming from Texas, and he threw a punch at one of the frat guys, and it turned out into a full out brawl. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, so my whole like I had my girlfriend there that we were only dating for a couple weeks. So I got her out of the fight. I came back in. My brother's a freshman. I got him out of the fight after he beat up some girl that he thought was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. What? <laughs> so then I, I run back in. I, so I put all the freshmen in. I end up getting into a fight with like 30 some guys. And and then we got out of the party, and then we go, and then there were some things that happened. We got back to the hockey party, and we told Frank, "Oh, we got in this big fight." All of a sudden, he Frank disappeared, <laughs> and then he went running back to the fight <laughs> after all, after all of us were gone, and then he comes back. He's like, oh, I had a great time. I got thrown out. So he's back. So the whole fight's over. We don't know what happened. There was actually some serious, some of those got, a whole nother frat got in. There was a lot of, actually some lawsuits going on. Yeah. So the next, so well, there's another, out, like there's 12 other people. That's what I remember yeah. hearing is Clacker's just <laughs> Clacker was just knocking people out left and right. Hey, I, I, I left that out of the, I left that out of the, I left that out of the <laughs> just <laughs> ping, 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 one punch, one punch, one punch, one punch. I, I had a good night. <laughs> so, so, Wedding so is the fun. Next day, so, so the next day we were at the, we all went to the pool. What was that pool called? Yeah, it was in the summer Arboretum. one, I remember. Oh, Arboretum. the Arboretums. Yeah. The Arboretums. So, so we we're all seeing There's the some great pools in the spring around there, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all laying at the Arboretums and all these guys show up from that fraternity in bandages, black eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to, I, I, and I started giving, I said, like, guys, what happened last night? Like, oh, we got jumped by a hundred guys, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and like, do they look like him? I put it at Frank. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> I, that's that's hilarious. That's uh because I, I remember a lot of the same stuff, although I remember like I was still in Frat Village and I got a phone call and I was I remember uh my girlfriend at that time picked up me, Rico, and Jer. And all of a sudden, I got a call from, I think it was you, Clacker. Like, where are you, man? We just got attacked by, like, jumped by, like, 30 dudes. Um, and I just felt so bad. I felt so left out of it that I wasn't going to be part of that story. <laughs> and I left my boys hanging. So I, like, got out of the car. I saw a, group, like, a, a huge group of people coming back, and they were all, like, fired up. At, like, you know, like a group after a fight, like, fired up. And I was like, that's got to be them. And then I went up to him. I started chirping <laughs> them, and all of a sudden, like all of them started. So I was like, "Oh shit!" So I got, I went back to the car with the door open, like one foot in the car. I told Rico and Jerry to get back in the car, and I was like throwing punches 
from the car, and then all of a sudden I got clocked. And then I got a, I got my senior or that, yeah, the junior picture, team picture that year. I got a black eye in yeah. the, in the junior yeah. picture yeah. from that night. And yeah, I just I the, yeah, I remember, I remember hearing that I mean, you were knocking out five dudes at at a time, but, and then we saw him with the black eye. I was trying to- I was trying to hold back my story a little bit of that, that <laughs> fact, while, while, while I posted this on the oh, internet. Uh, no, I, got, I mean, well, I, I think no, it's, I think nobody's going to listen to this. <laughs> They're probably not the toughest guys that you want in that fight. <laughs> 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 Talk to the back of the no, no, limitations. No, but... no, I was actually kind of lucky. I got posted between like two cars and a wall. And I had guys running one at a time trying to fight me. And I was just like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just sitting there just laughing. <laughs> Instead of them being able to be a group, they had to come out you one at a time. <laughs> you just kept yeah. dropping them. Just like a and movie. I, and I was just sitting there dying. And then I found it. I just walked out of that party. And I'm like, what happened to you guys? <laughs> Somebody you know, punched a girl in the face. <laughs> See, it's oh interesting, God, right? Every class is different. Our class didn't really have all these dust ups. We were all just having fun and having a good time. Oh, right? no. oh, what happens when you My, bring meatheads to a D one school? Yeah. Weaver Weaver yeah. had some good ones. <laughs> no. My, hey. Uh, we didn't bring Ludwig on this party. My favorite, my favorite dust up was with me creeping Ludwig. It's still my favorite dust up. Oh, I should have got Ludwig on. I because like I knew him, but he never really played when I was there. No, because he because he was supposed to. He was my roommate, and the guy blew his knee out two weeks before the season started. So they deferred him a year. Hmm. Yeah, because hey could... guys, I don't want to kill the momentum. Okay. I gotta go. I gotta put a door in my grandma's bathroom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you. you better get hey, great senior. She needs a door to take a dump. <laughs> <laughs> see you, boys. <laughs> Happy Gilmore. Later, Franco. Good to see you, buddy. It's only been yeah. two hours of lows. Don't worry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. Yeah. Uh, oh gosh. Uh, Wally, Wally, I gotta get going too. Bro. I, I know you do. Early. This is how it all happens, <laughs> and you know, and then it's up early, early, man. All Vex, good you... things have to come to an end. It's hey, just disgusting. Vex, you're a geek, dude. My college group starts before the fucking crack of dawn, man. I gotta be in the gym. You early. know what? Uh, so what? They gotta work gonna... all day. I no, thought they, they get paid. I, now. I work all day, but they, you know they what, they're Vex? there for two hours. I gotta I gotta drink right now and I gotta work. I gotta get up the same time <laughs> you do, and I work yeah. all day. Exactly. Yeah, 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 me yeah, too. Yeah. So why yeah, the, all, why are the college kids getting up so early? Why don't they train with the pros? Like, they gotta work. Like 6 PM college right kids right. aren't allowed to train with the pros. You gotta be a pro to train with the pros. <laughs> that's a oh, is that a thing? Well, that's just my thing. That's your thing. Yeah. Only if you have tattoos all over your arm. This is GDM. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yacked. Uh, uh, what's up? Boom. All right. Love you, Wally. Love okay, you, buddy. Great. Hey, love thanks for coming on, time. man. Dude, great time. The, my face hurts from smiling. I'm excited to listen oh, to this God, one again. Man. Brothers for life, folks. Broncos. All right, boys. Daddy you, was buddy. no peace. <laughs> love you, Wally. Later, boys. Good to see you all. Oh, Silky's out too. Look at him just fly out of here too. They, they, don't worry, guys. They've already been here before. That's why they're not as excited about this, you know. That's why they're not as excited about this is because they've never been here before. We can do our solo episodes too, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really have anything else other than Krisky. What was your favorite college night? Was it the Halloween party? Did I ask you that, or who did I ask that? That was you. No, I just um, brought that up. Yeah, okay. I think I think that's a core memory for most of us. That was an awesome one. But, it, was, uh, it was. It's too I, bad you know we what, lost Wally? most of the next games. You you know what? That night you set me up. That was my second college goal. You set me up for the game winner against Ohio State that night. So I was I was cool. on a high. There you go. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. it's interesting what people remember. Like I. I remember the guys that were older than me as the guys that like taught me the way. Right. And uh, like Vex and them all talk about how our team never worked out and we weren't in shape. Like when Paul Davies and Dana lottery and the leadership core we had, when we got there were the leaders, like 
I would do extra with everything I was doing because I was being like them. And then we lost our way when I wasn't as much of a leader as I should have been. Um, I got better as I got older and realized that I had a hard time being mean to my teammates. I had a hard time telling them what they were doing was wrong, telling them I, whatever. And I was lazy myself for some things, but um, it sucks because I wish we would have won more. And uh, I think that if I would have been the older guy, more of a leader, then I probably could have helped more, but it sucked sucking. Sucking sucks, right, Silk? <laughs> you saw that right. picture. Well, you know what? It does suck. It we does went, suck. We had a great time. We had a great class. So I, I have no I have no qualms about our, our time yeah. in West. We had a great class. We had a lot of fun. No, I, again, I, I think, Silk, so, okay, to your point, like I think our class was a gr- uh, unbelievable group of guys, every single one of them. And they competed. Yep. They worked hard. We wanted uh, yeah, yeah, we really did. We wanted when we came they, and we worked. We, we were guys that like didn't like weren't like we had like a half of our class wasn't on the roster, wasn't gonna play, you know, and we've like found a way to like make it work and it was it was good, man. We uh we had a hard working group and we had a lot of fun and it was good. So well, we were, I, and it's interesting too though, the way I look at it is you know, you talk about the bodies and what it was like, but like Stretch, Yahtzee, Daryl, and myself, like, we'd do anything for our teammates, and I don't think anybody would say anything differently, but um, it was a very old-school mentality when it came to coaching and playing, and there wasn't much of a relationship there with, I guess, the head coach. The assistant coaches we I was tight with, um, but it was – It was hard because I wasn't a good enough leader, but like it was so dysfunctional (laughs) come the end that like it was bizarre living in that apartment when like your some of your roommates are checked out. You're trying to like make the NHL and you're like, This is so confusing. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. But I think that's where our class our class kind of changed it a little bit, right? Like we Well, it did, and that's them putting Vex with me helped, right? Yeah. He taught me things just from sitting in the hotel room with him. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know what though? Like those four years for me, and like you said, Silk and Clacker, the our class, it was just a blast. And I honestly, even though even though it didn't work out for me hockey wise, maybe is what I would have liked or dreamed or whatever. Like those four years at that school with, with all the different classes and especially our class, like would not trade that for the world. It was like you said, Wally, it's about like the people, the team, the like, yeah. And I, the I, Bronco I agree family. with, I agree with you. I feel sad that the sport is getting away from that because I feel like those four years, like it's a, when you look back at your life, like those are things that stand out to you. And, and, and if you like, ever yeah. saw any of those guys, right. If you ran into stretch or Daryl, like, you know, it would, it would be there, exciting. The thing stuff. Is too, like a lot of the stuff that's happened after hockey uh, has been involved with guys they either played hockey with or played hockey at Western with. I mean, it goes back to that time and time again, right? Like the networking community, cause you know that you can trust that person. Yes. And it's, it's pretty incredible, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I talked, talked about Nagerson earlier. Nagerson is my dude. And that guy and I have kind of like, we've, we've worked our careers together outside of hockey. And, and it's all because we met at Western and we found the same niche. And he's like one of my best buddies now, too. So well, it's, and it's, it's what uh, hockey gives you, right? It's, yeah, uh, I mean, you don't you even know, realize it. And then, yeah. like, everybody has a different path. It's like Chris Key got into working right after. Silk played one season. Clacker played a whole bunch, fought the world. I did my thing, and like everybody gets out of the game different ways, but like it isn't easy. But the longer I went with it, was more like you kind of lose relationships with the Broncos because you went and played another 10 years and you didn't stay in as much contact as the guys didn't have anything else after right because those guys probably wanted to hang on to it more than the guys that like your 
you're in another season and you're busy with all that. And uh, I don't know. It's a confusing thing when we all go our separate ways, when we were literally like brothers, like every, everything we did was together. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything. That's great, man. Yeah. 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 Well, I love you, Wally. I know you're ready for bed too. I got to go to bed too. We all got to go to bed. I still got to download this and send this shit. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And this has been another episode of two ales and hockey tales with my Bronco puppies and Wally.